Chapter 531 Elliot turned his head and gave Ray a dirty look, signaling the latter to shut up. Anastasia was visibly stunned. Inwardly, she was incredibly moved. He's done so much behind the scenes for my dad's condition, she thought. Thank you so much, she said. Then, ignoring the crowd coming and going around them, she flung her arms around Elliot's neck and stood on tiptoe to kiss him on the cheek. Elliot put his muscular arms around her waist to make it easier for her to kiss him. Ray turned around behind them while stifling a laugh. President Pressgrave has to thank me for this. Would Miss Tillman have been so moved if I hadn't spoken out of turn? After kissing Elliot, Anastasia held his hand, saying, In that case, let's go upstairs and take a look. Elliot nodded before heading for the elevator with her in his arms. Ray didn't go with them though, Elliot had something else for him to do. Perhaps because he was too disgusted with Alex, he ordered Ray to monitor Alex's every move from now on. He wanted to get something on Alex as soon as possible in order to send the latter to jail. Now that the latter was obviously not capable enough of managing Tillman constructions, he would definitely take some illegal shortcuts or he might want to wangle some money out of the company and then run away. Whatever he wanted, he would certainly do something. Standing in front of the French window, Anastasia looked at the few specialists who were standing before Francis' sickbed in the middle of a discussion. Her heart was filled with hope and anticipation as she hoped that they had a better way to bring him round. Just then, Elliot came over to her from behind with two cups of coffee in his hands. Taking a cup of coffee from him, Anastasia turned to look at him, only to see a somewhat tired look on his good-looking face. Not only that, but there seemed to be dark circles under his eyes, which caused her to feel sorry for him at once. You didn't sleep well last night? Did I disturb you while we were sleeping? She asked with self-reproach. The man's beautifully shaped eyes were bloodshot, making her feel even sorrier for him. Elliot curled his lips into a smile before gracefully taking a sip of his coffee. Nope, you slept like a log, then why couldn't you sleep well? Anastasia was puzzled. Elliot turned to look at her, but he was somewhat hesitant to speak. This woman probably has never been romantically involved with a man before, which is why she's clueless about men's troubles. Well, it's not her fault. I'm glad that there's never been another man in her life. Not wanting to put her on the spot, he could only find a random excuse. Nothing. It's just that I slept late last night because I was too preoccupied with work. Anastasia took a drink of her coffee, which was aromatic and silky smooth. Somehow, looking at the specialist standing before Francis' bed, she felt even more reassured. These people are probably leading medical authorities from different hospitals, so this guy must have done a lot of things for them to show up in dad's war together. For someone as proud as him, it must have been difficult to plead with them in person. Sorry for causing you so much trouble over what happened to my dad, she said sincerely. He's not only your dad, he's also my father-in-law. Isn't it my duty to save my father-in-law, Elliot asked her in reply. Anastasia was floored by his question right away. For a moment, she didn't know what to say, so she could only let out a laugh. Okay, if you say so, I'll have to marry you in the future, that's of course. Who are you gonna marry if not me? Elliot had absolute confidence in himself. Anastasia blinked her eyes. Seems like I won't be getting the short end of the stick by marrying him. So, I'm the one who has struck gold by taking advantage of him, right? Meanwhile, Erica didn't get to see Alex at the Tillman residence that night. He said he had to visit a client on business, so she stayed alone all night. Unbeknownst to her, however, instead of going anywhere, he spent the night finding solace in Haley. Early the next morning, Erica left home in her car. However, when she drove out of the gate, a figure suddenly dashed over and stopped her car. Startled, she hurriedly slammed on the brakes, upon which she felt that she had knocked down the person. Frightened, she immediately opened the car door and got out of the car to take a look, only to see the man who had lingered outside her home last night. He was lying on the ground, but it was obvious that he wasn't injured. Chapter 532 It's you again, 
What the hell do you want? Get lost! Erica swore in exasperation. Just then, the man got up and suddenly approached her. After studying her face with probing eyes, he finally saw the mole on her cheek, upon which he laughed happily like a fool. What the hell are you looking at? FCAC off. Get in my way again and I'll run you over. Erica snapped with a snort. The man gave a sigh as if to lament about something. Did Naomi teach you to conduct yourself like this? Well, that's understandable. Your mom is such a person after all. One can't expect her to teach you to be good. What nonsense are you talking about? And what did you call my mom? Naomi? Who gave you the right to call her on our first name basis? Erica only assumed the man to be a former friend of Naomi. But what makes him think he can come asking for mom right now? He looks so ignoble and disgusting. He's got to be up to something. What's your name? Do you know what your father's name is? I'm Erica Tillman. My dad is Francis Tillman. Erica proudly told the man Francis' name. Upon hearing her words, the man gave a wry laugh right away. Francis Tillman isn't your father. The smug look on Erica's face instantly vanished. She and Naomi were the only ones who knew that she wasn't Francis' daughter. How did the man know that? What bullsh tea are you talking about? I'm warning you, cut that nonsense. However, the man said again, you're not Francis' daughter. Erica's face instantly paled with horror. She glared at the man, saying, that's nonsense. I am Francis' daughter. The man was finally unable to restrain himself any longer. Staring at Erica, Heck growled somewhat irritably, you're not. You are the daughter of Naomi and me. I'm your father, and you're my daughter. Erica's eyes widened in horror. Fear enveloped her as she looked at the man in disbelief. What? The low-class man before me is my father? No, that's not possible. I'll never acknowledge such a man as my father. FCAC off. Who wants to be your daughter? I'm warning you, if you dare talk nonsense again, ill, I need 10,000. As long as you give me the money, I promise you that I won't go around telling people about it. The man didn't go out of his way to come here to reunite with his daughter. He was here to ask for money. Erica really looked down on the man before her from the bottom of her heart, but she had to silence him. She looked around, and luckily there wasn't anyone else around. She hurriedly took her bag out of her car and grabbed a handful of cash out of it. Handing the cash to him, she said in a quavering voice, get out of my face with the money and don't show up in front of me ever again. I don't care who you are. I'll never have anything to do with you. Seeing the cash, the man took it from her without counting it. He knew just by touching it that there had to be more than 10,000 in it. He said happily, whether you admit it or not, I'm your father, and you're quite pretty, Erica only found his words disgusting. Nevertheless, she stared fixedly at the man for a few seconds. He was by no means comparable to Francis, who had regular features and gave off an air of scholarly refinement through every pore. On the other hand, one could tell at a glance that this man was struggling for a living at the bottom rung of society. Take the money and don't show up in front of me or come to me again, she warned. The man couldn't help but take another look at her car before stretching out his hand to touch its painted surface. This car must be expensive, right? The paint seems to be of such a high quality. Don't touch my car with your dirty hands. Erica was pissed off. She didn't want to see the man even for a second. The man felt a twinge of inferiority as well. He could only pull his hand back, asking, Where's your mom? Erica didn't want to tell him about Naomi, though. Pulling the car door open, she said, Don't come to us if there's nothing. With that, she revved up her car and sped away. The man crouched on the ground and began to count the cash. After counting out a total of 15,000, he happily produced a packet of cigarettes and started smoking. Chapter 533 Now, I'll have someone to rely on for cash, thought the man as he left while smoking happily. At this moment, Mrs. Garner, the servant, stood up behind the wall next to the little door with a shocked expression. She couldn't believe she had just learned a big secret by chance. She happened to be sweeping the yard when she heard Erica yelling outside the gate earlier. 
She had wanted to head out to take a look, but when she saw that Erica was all right, she didn't feel like doing so anymore. Consequently, she eavesdropped on Erica's conversation with the man. She couldn't believe that the plainly dressed man was actually Erica's biological father. Perhaps nobody in the Tillman family knows the secret of Erica's parentage. Now that she thought about it, that would make Anastasia the only real daughter of the Tillman family. Having worked here for more than 10 years, Mrs. Garner had witnessed with her own eyes how Naomi had abused Anastasia both verbally and physically. During Anastasia's maiden years, Naomi's daughter lived like a princess, whereas the real daughter of the Tillman family couldn't even buy a piece of clothing. Inwardly, she felt somewhat sorry for Anastasia, but she felt even sorrier for Francis, who had raised another man's daughter for over 20 years. Even his company had fallen into Naomi's and Erica's hands now, whereas Anastasia seemed to have only gotten less than one-third of its shares. Mrs. Garner was shrewd, so she wouldn't easily let out such a big secret. Not only that, but she had learned how to be shrewd and calculating while living here. This was a great opportunity to make a fortune. Erica would make a fortune in the future with the shares she now held in Tillman Constructions. I'll trade this secret for some money, which will be enough for me to live out my life in retirement. She didn't have to live the humble life of a servant anymore. And besides, it wasn't like Naomi was nice to her anyway. She resented Naomi and Erica deep down. Meanwhile, Ray left home for work in the morning. On his way to his office, he received a phone call. As it turned out, the person he had sent out last night to trail Alex found something. Send me the photos, he said. The person quickly sent Ray the photos. The instant he tapped on them, he was stunned right away. Why was Alex with Haley? Who else is the coquettish-looking woman holding Alex's arms in the photos if it isn't Haley? Is Alex having an affair with her as soon as he is married to Erica? As for how Haley and Alex ended up getting involved with each other, Ray was no longer interested to know because he had to report this to Elliot. Elliot's motorcade set out from the hospital for the Pressgrave Group's headquarters. On his way there, he received a phone call and a few pictures from Ray. Elliot's frosty eyes narrowed slightly as he merely took a glance at the photos before swiping them away. Send these photos to Anastasia and see if they're of any use to her. Roger that, President Pressgrave, having gotten up early in the morning. Anastasia was sitting in the specialist's office and listening to their discussion on Francis' condition. She didn't understand the terms they used, but it seemed from the way they sounded that there was hope for Francis' condition. At that moment, her cell phone beeped with an incoming text message. She picked up the phone and saw Ray's message which read, Miss Tillman, one have some photos for you to look at right after that, he sent her over 10 photos. When she saw the first photo, she was stunned for a few seconds. The photo showed Haley holding Alex's arm in a seductively charming posture. Not only that, but there were also several photos of them kissing each other affectionately on the cheek. Seeing these photos, Anastasia felt uncomfortable because Alex cheated on Erica so merrily shortly after marrying her. Apart from that, the person whom he was cheating with was someone whom Erica thought was her bestie. On the other hand, Haley really had no scruples. She wasn't ashamed of stealing Erica's husband at all. Anastasia gloated over the photos with a feeling of exultation. I'll just watch what happens next and let the two women rip each other to shreds when it's necessary. However, something occurred to her. Haley only liked Alex for his money. It was especially so after he became the president of Tillman Constructions and she was only too eager to please him. Chapter 534 What if? A smile curled the corners of Anastasia's lips. Will she still be able to laugh if I freeze all of Alex's debit cards? The finance department had confirmed from the account statements that Alex had embezzled the company's funds, which gave her the right to freeze and audit all his bank accounts, during which time he wouldn't be able to spend even a penny. She went outside and called the person in charge of the finance department, telling them to start preparing for this. The department would go through all the procedures and have Alex's debit cards frozen by this afternoon. 
At this moment, Alex was having a meeting at Tillman Constructions. Now that he had suddenly lost quite a few clients thanks to Elliot, he had to source for new clients, so he was quite busy. Erica came soon afterward, but her mind was elsewhere today, preoccupied with the man she had come across this morning. The man's face filled her with loathing and disdain. Damnably, however, the man was her biological father. What's wrong, Erica? Did you not sleep well last night? Alex asked with concern. Were you really meeting with a client last night? Why did you come back early in the morning? Erica asked dubiously. Alex couldn't help but give her his puppy dog eyes, saying, I came back early in the morning for the meeting. Don't you see that my eyes are bloodshot? As expected, Erica bought his story. Not only that, but she even felt sorry for him and hugged him, saying, Sorry, I shouldn't have doubted you. You've worked hard enough for the company. Alex didn't forget to express his love for her. It's okay. I can bear all kinds of hardships for your sake. You're my wife, after all. Upon hearing his words, Erica cheered up a little. Well, nothing wrong will happen as long as the secret of my parentage remains hidden. Otherwise, if Anastasia learns about it, the whole Tillman constructions will be back in her hands, she thought. It was soon 3 o'clock p.m., and Alex was up to his ears in work. However, Erica didn't understand the company's affairs, so she could only go out and hang around. Recalling that she hadn't gotten in touch with Haley for a long time, she called her immediately. Haley happened to be free as well, so they agreed to meet up. In the cafe, Erica noticed Haley's healthy complexion and how the latter was dressed in designer clothes again. Not only that, but the latter was carrying a new purse. She asked with a smile, Seems like you've been doing fine recently. Did you get yourself a sugar daddy or something? Haley averted her eyes guiltily for a moment. Nope, I didn't. It's just that someone's been nice to me. Erica looked at her face, which had successfully undergone plastic surgery. One had to say that the plastic surgery did produce nice results. Haley had thrown money at it, after all. However, nobody knew the price she paid for this. She had now lost both her sense of smell and sense of taste, which made her life extremely difficult. However, life had to continue, so she had no choice but to wangle money from Alex for her medical treatment. You do look a little like Anastasia with your makeup on, Erica said. Haley's eyes flickered with displeasure. Who says that I have to look like her? I just want to be myself now. Erica was rendered speechless for a moment. She felt that Haley was obviously imitating Anastasia in every aspect. Not only that, but she even purposely wore light makeup like the latter. However, she lied through her teeth about it. How is Anastasia now? And how is your dad? Haley asked. Erica couldn't help but ask in surprise. How did you know what happened to my dad? When did I tell you about it? Haley's face paled slightly with fright. She hurriedly said, you didn't tell me about it? Then where did I hear that? Oh right, I accidentally heard it from someone when I went to your place to visit you last time. I forgot about it, Erica didn't think much about it either. She said with a sigh. My dad's comatose, and my mom. She was set up by Anastasia that be chi chi and locked up. Haley deliberately feigned shock. What? What did Anastasia do to your mom? She said it was my mom who made my dad comatose. That's bullsh tea, Erica said through clenched teeth. Haley sneered inwardly. Weren't you guys in this together? How could you speak so self-righteously as though you have justice on your side? Anastasia is indeed scheming and vicious. Neither of us is a match for her. You've got to watch out for her in the future, she said. Come chapter 535. That's of course. I won't let her have an easy time, Erica said resentfully. Well then, let's go shopping. Haley suggested before getting up to pay the bill. She went to the counter as Erica waited for her in her seat. The card she was using right now was Alex's, so she naturally handed it to the waitress, who then swiped the card. However, the card was declined. Sorry, miss, but this card of yours is declined, the waitress said to Haley. Haley took the card and glanced at it. How is that possible? I just used it this morning. Swipe it again. 
The waitress tried a few more times, but the payment was still declined. Haley had no choice but to take the card back and pay the bill in cash. As she looked toward Erica, she was inwardly puzzled. Did Alex cancel the card he had given me? When Erica suggested that they go shopping, Haley excused herself, saying that she had something to deal with. As a result, Erica had no choice but to drive her somewhere and drop her off. After parting from Erica, she hurried to a bank to find out what was wrong with her card. She was sitting at the counter when the bank officer said to her in surprise, Miss, this card of yours has been frozen, so it can't be used. What? It's frozen? Who froze it? Are you the owner of this card? If not, you should ask the owner what's going on, under what circumstances will a debit card be frozen? Haley asked curiously. There are many circumstances that can cause this. You should ask the card owner to find out what happened in particular. As Haley left the bank with the card in her hand, she had a bad feeling in her gut. She took out her phone and dialed Alex's number. Hey Haley, Alex, why is your card frozen? I couldn't buy what I wanted, what? Wait a minute. Alex was checking his phone's messages. He hadn't had time to check his cell phone because he was too busy with the meeting. And sure enough, his phone registered a notification from the bank saying that all the bank cards under his name had been frozen. Haley, I'll call you back in a minute. The card is unusable for the time being. Inwardly, he was anxious as well, for he knew whose doing it was. It's Anastasia. After hanging up on Haley, he anxiously stepped out of his office. Anastasia didn't come to the finance department today, so the only ones working here were her subordinates. Alex went to Gregory Lewinsky, the group leader in charge of the department's affairs. Mr. Lewinsky, why did you have my cards frozen? Who gave you the right to do so? He questioned angrily. President Hunter, this is done on Miss Tillman's orders. You can call her to ask her about it. Gregory replied immediately. However, Alex dared not call Anastasia, mainly because he was the one in the wrong and that it'd be difficult to talk about his misappropriation of the company's funds. Mr. Lewinsky, how about you unfreeze my cards first? I'll explain the matter to Miss Tillman later, he said. Sorry, but we only obey Miss Tillman's orders here, Gregory replied coldly while snubbing Alexalex had no choice but to leave the finance department. Standing before the French window, he took out his cell phone and pondered for a moment. Still, he dialed Anastasia's number. Hello? Anastasia's voice was chilly. Anastasia, could you inform me before freezing my debit cards? My life is affected now that all my debit cards are completely unusable, Alex said in a polite tone. Anastasia had no intention of letting him off, though. President Hunter, you should know why I have your debit cards frozen. There are problems with several accounts, so your cards will be unusable until the money is recovered. Anastasia, I'm Erica's husband and your brother-in-law. Could you unfreeze my debit cards first for the sake of our relationship? I'll solve the rest of the issues as quickly as possible, Alex implored humbly. Sorry, but let's follow the company's rules, Anastasia replied before hanging up. At once, Alex pounded the wall as if he had gone crazy. He had been under tremendous pressure recently. There were always problems with running the company. He often had to deal with either a lack of materials or a bunch of customer complaints. Not only that, but he had to source for new clients. In other words, being the president of Tillman Constructions was far from being as glamorous as he had imagined. Chapter 536 Alex's eyes were bloodshot. He had no choice but to take out his cell phone and dial Erica's number. Hello, Erica, Anastasia froze my bank cards. Could you lend me yours for a moment? I need it now for an emergency. What? Why would Anastasia freeze your bank cards? She found out about the money I embezzled last time and used it as a reason to have my bank cards frozen, Alex explained somewhat indignantly. All right, I'll give you a card later. Erica replied. Alex then hung up on her. Still, he was finding a way to unfreeze his cards. Meanwhile, in the hospital, 
The female nurse in charge of Francis Fluids was replacing his cannula when she suddenly sensed a movement in his arm as she was holding it. Startled, she stopped putting in his cannula and hurried outside to report it to the doctors. Soon after that, Anastasia learned that Francis had shown a response. Seeing the few specialists who were checking on Francis' condition before his sickbed, she stood outside the window with a flicker of surprise in her eyes. Dad finally made a movement, which means that he's getting closer and closer to regaining consciousness. Just then, the nurse in charge of replacing Francis' cannula just now came over to her, saying, Miss Tillman, I'm sure that your father moved. Thank you. I believe that my dad's recovering, Anastasia replied thankfully. After that, she took out her cell phone and dialed Elliot's number. She said to him in surprise, My dad showed a response just now. He moved. She didn't realize that it was strangely quiet on the other end of the line. Elliot's voice sounded especially deep and clear as if it were played in stereo. He was happy for her. Is that so? Well, that means our efforts aren't in vain. Realizing that it was too quiet on the other end, Anastasia asked with embarrassment, Are you in a meeting? Mm-hmm, Elliot replied with a chuckle. In that case, just go ahead with your meeting. I won't bother you any longer, all right. I'll call you back when the meeting is over, Elliot said to her. Anastasia hung up. She really wanted to share with him immediately what had just happened to Francis, but she somewhat blamed herself upon recalling how she had interrupted him while he was in a meeting. As for Erica, she had no intention of sharing the matter with her. She didn't feel like telling Erica about it. After all, all the latter cared about was the company, not her father. Meanwhile, Naomi was still being detained. The evidence submitted by Anastasia was sufficient for her to be charged with attempted murder. At this moment, she experienced how distressing it was to be imprisoned. Only two weeks had passed since she was put behind bars, but she was already feeling miserable. To her, life in prison was utterly inhumane. At this moment, she found herself hoping that Francis could regain consciousness and get her out of prison. Even if he hated her and divorced her, she was fine with it as long as she didn't have to go to prison. And besides, Erica couldn't be of much help to her while she was here. All the former could do was bring her clothes. Other than that, all she had here was a bed surrounded by ice-cold walls. She yearned for life outside the prison, but she also dreaded what Anastasia would do to her. If Francis were to remain comatose for life, Anastasia would probably hate her so much as to have her locked up in here forever. She felt like crying. To think that I'd forsake my comfortable life out there and let myself come to such a bad end, she thought. She hoped day after day that Erica and Alex would get her out of here, only to get disappointed every single day. Still, she knew how much Erica was capable of. The latter was essentially terribly spoiled and had no ability to speak of. She also regretted not having raised Erica to be like Anastasia, who could put everything aside first to save her father. In the afternoon, Erica brought Alex a bank card, wanting to ask him out to dinner in the evening before spending some quality time together. After all, now that they were husband and wife, she also wanted to sleep with him. However, Alex declined her dinner invitation, saying that he had to work until late tonight because he was too busy with work at his office. Erica was a person who could hardly stay idle. And besides, she'd rather go home and binge on TV dramas in bed than keep Alex company while he worked extra hours. Moreover, Alex also persuaded her to go home, so she had no choice but to leave reluctantly. Just when she was halfway to her home, she heard the beep of a text message. She picked up her cell phone and took a look, only to see a message saying that 40,000 had been withdrawn from her card. Chapter 537 Erica was stunned. For whom did Alex withdraw the 40,000? Not only that, but it pained her that he had withdrawn such a large amount at one go. However, recalling that he needed the money urgently to feast the clients or something, she had no choice but to suppress her displeasure. Unbeknownst to her, however, the 40,000 was delivered to Haley's hands as soon as it was withdrawn by Alex. Seeing the stack of notes on the desk, she hugged Alex happily, 
Alex, thank you for always having me on your mind, Alex replied, I can't let you suffer, after all, he was really in love with Haley, whose gentleness and adoration for him made him feel needed. Furthermore, he liked her pretty looks. Her features, which somewhat resembled Anastasia's, often fascinated him. Meanwhile, Erica drove back to her home when she suddenly saw the man from last time, her biological father, standing by the wall next to the gate. Startled, she immediately got out of her car. What are you doing here? Who gave you the permission to show up here? She showed no respect for him, as if chasing a beggar away. However, the man asked her for money right away as her father. Erica, I need more money. Your dad is short of cash here. Erica was filled with disgust. She replied with a sneer, who told you that you're my dad? Get out of my face. I don't want to see you at all. How could you ask me for money again after I gave you over 10,000 just a few days ago? Are you taking me for an ATM machine? However, the man had found out about the Tillman family's background. How could you have no money? Francis Tillman is rich. He's got a big company and owns assets of over a billion. What about your mom? At this very moment, Erica hated Naomi somewhat. Why would the latter choose such a low-class man to be her father? He was nothing but a useless good for nothing. That's the Tillman family's money. What does it have to do with you? You're the Tillman family's second daughter, so you definitely have money. I don't need much, Erica. Just give me another 20,000, and I promise I won't show up again. Upon hearing that, Erica immediately believed him. Really? You won't show up again? You're my daughter. Now that you're doing well, I'm glad about it. I won't show up and disturb you and your mother. Erica happened to have 20,000 in her bag, which she had just withdrawn from her bank account. Upon hearing his words, she took out her bag and produced a stack of notes from it before handing it to him. Hide as far away as possible and don't let me see you again. The man's face lit up with pleasure as he took the money. Sure, upon seeing this, however, Erica felt even more disgusted. She even found herself dirty for having the man's blood running in her veins. How she wished she were Francis' daughter, just like Anastasia. However, as long as no one uncovered her parentage, she would still be Francis' second daughter and the second young lady of the Tillman family. Inwardly, she was determined to keep this a secret for life. However, she didn't know that her parentage was no longer a secret. Mrs. Garner, the servant of her home, had learned about it. Meanwhile, at the Pressgrave Hospital, Anastasia learned of another piece of good news that night. Francis' brainwaves had begun to show a response. The response wasn't strong, but this was nonetheless a piece of great news. It meant that Francis might regain consciousness. As a result, the boulder wing on her chest began to come loose. She believed that Francis would definitely wake up, upon which the story about his will would fall apart. All of those who attempted to steal the Tillman family's wealth would never get away with it. It was already well past midnight, but Anastasia was sleepless with excitement, so she came outside Francis' ward again and sat down. After sitting there for a while, she saw Elliot coming over with a jacket in his arms and a glass of water in his hand. Both the glass of water and the jacket were intended for her. Her heart warmed as she held the glass of water with both hands and smiled with the jacket that was full of his scent draped over her shoulders. Why are you still awake? Elliot sat beside her, keeping her company. I'm sleepless like you. I'm very happy too, but you've got tons of work awaiting you tomorrow, whereas I can be lazy and sleep, Anastasia replied, feeling sorry for him. Elliot leaned slightly closer to her with an intense look in his eyes. I can't sleep unless you're sleeping with me in my arms. Chapter 538 Anastasia pursed her red lips before nodding lightly. Okay, you go back to your room first. I'll come over in a minute. Only then did Elliot get up and go back to his room, looking satisfied. Holding the glass of warm water in both hands, she took several drinks from it before heading for his room with his jacket draped over her shoulders. Elliot's bedroom belonged exclusively to him. Decorated like the room of a seven-star hotel, 
It was furnished with everything one would expect to find. Anastasia saw him reclining in bed and doing nothing as if purposely waiting for her. Hanging his suit jacket on the clothes tree, she sat down on the edge of the bed. Then, she lay down on her side and looked at him, saying, Let's sleep. Putting his arms around her, Eliot pressed her to his heart and sniffed at her hair. Like her, he was longing for Francis to wake up so that their engagement ceremony could be held again. Anastasia, let's go ahead with our engagement when our dad wakes up, he whispered in her ear. Anastasia replied bashfully, okay. Upon hearing this, the man behind her hugged her passionately before gently turning her around. After kissing her forehead and her nose, he finally sealed her lips in a kiss. He really needed her comfort at this very moment. In the end, looking at the man who got out of bed in embarrassment, Anastasia stifled her laughter under the covers. This guy is really asking for it. He shouldn't have asked me to sleep in his room. It was early morning, and the whole Tillman Constructions was in a state of agitation after the company had shut down for a few days. As the company's new president, Alex was in a terrible fix. As soon as his car drove in, it got surrounded by a group of employees because they weren't getting their paycheck for the month. After getting out of his car, Alex had Nakasi but to promise them that they would get their paycheck. Otherwise, he wouldn't even be able to enter his office. What do we do now, President Hunter? Now that the orders have been cancelled, our goods can't be shipped out. Our warehouse is now overstocked with goods, stressed out. Alex put his head in his hands, but he was also at the end of his rope. Shortly after that, the two other shareholders came as well. They had made money with Francis being the company's president, but now they were losing money with Alex running the company. As a result, they panicked as well. Thrown into a state of restless anxiety, Alex nearly gave up the shares he was holding. Just then, however, he thought of begging someone. Anastasia, as long as Elliot stops targeting me, those big clients will definitely come back, he thought. Immediately, he dialed Anastasia's number and implored, Miss Tillman, please ask President Pressgraf to give our clients back to us. Our company really can't hold out any longer, Anastasia sounded very apathetic on the other end. Even if the company can't hold out anymore, it's your own business. If you really can't manage it, you can transfer your shares to me and let me manage it instead. But how could Alex be willing to hand the company over? Miss Tillman, we're a family. Surely your father wouldn't want his company to go bankrupt, right? My dad no longer has anything to do with the company. Now that we're the ones holding shares in the company, even if the company goes bankrupt and undergoes liquidation, it's our own business. What does my dad have to do with it? Still, you own 30% of the company's shares. Won't it pain you if you lose money? Alex tried to persuade her. Anastasia replied with a sneer, I don't care. I'm fine with losing money. Alex nearly spat blood and anger. You, to think that she's stamping on me in such a way. She'd rather watch Tillman Constructions go bankrupt because she's got Elliot at her back and is afraid of nothing, but Erica and I have no way out. He began to think of selling off the company. The only way out is to sell it off. Now that there are no signs of improvement, the company is gonna be ruined at my hands. He tried to call another building materials company, wanting to sell them the shares under his name, but the person rejected his offer outright. He then made several other phone calls to the businessmen who had shown interest in Tillman Constructions, but they also rejected his offer as if the company was at hot potato that they dared not even touch. Chapter 539 In the end, Alex's heart sank into the depths of despair. Could this be Elliot's doing too? Is he trying to force Tillman Constructions into bankruptcy so that the company is ruined in my hands? All of a sudden, he was filled with terror and dread. Now that Tillman Constructions was in his hands, it brought him great danger instead of money. At the moment, he was under pressure from both the employees and its shareholders. His nerves were about to snap as all kinds of pressure bore down on him. If the employees couldn't get their paycheck, he would become their main target. As such, 
Tillman Constructions was plunged into a crisis, with Alex suffering the most as the person in the eye of the storm. Before he could enjoy the pleasure brought by power and wealth, he was suffocated by the pressure weighing on his chest. Such was Elliot's trick. Instead of making Tillman Constructions go bankrupt in one fell swoop, he wanted Alex to go through hell for his greed. With Anastasia taking charge of the company's finances, whatever decision Alex made had to gain her approval. If she were to put a little more pressure on him, he wouldn't be able to do anything about it. This would make him even more anxious, like a cat on a hot tin roof. Today, as soon as Alex stepped out of the company's entrance, he was approached by three MPVs, from which a bunch of reporters suddenly stepped out and blocked his path. Excuse us, President Hunter, but some of Tillman Construction's employees complained that their paychecks had been delayed. Can we ask if it's true? How are you gonna deal with the salary payments? As Tillman Construction's president, you have to give the public an explanation. Alex looked at the cameras that were focused on his face. He stretched out his hand and knocked off one of the cameras, saying, Stop filming. I'm not gonna comment on my company's affairs, but some of Tillman Construction's employees are staging a protest about this. President Hunter, what you gonna do about their delayed paychecks? Just then, the security guards came over and brought Alex into Tillman Construction's premises, keeping the reporters outside the entrance. Stepping into the company's lobby in discomfiture, Alex said to the security guards, don't let the reporters in. Less than 10 minutes later, Alex was on the news with a very eye-catching title above his photo. It read, Alex Hunter, president of Tillman Constructions, suspected of embezzling huge sums of money and delaying paychecks on purpose. Upon seeing this, Alex got so furious that he nearly smashed the iPad in his hands. The news story's comment section was full of abuses against him. Alex was a proud man who cared a lot about his reputation. At this very moment, however, he was universally condemned like a public enemy. It didn't take long before Erica called to ask him what was going on. Having reached the limit of his patience, Alex snapped, what else could it be? I'm now caught between the devil and the deep blue sea in order to run the company for you. Erica, do you still have money in your hands? I still have millions of wages to pay out. Could you lend me the money first to help me cope with the emergency? Erica also couldn't do anything about it though. How am I supposed to have so much money? But I still have a few of my mom's cards with me. I don't know whether there's money on them though. Go check whether there's still money on the cards then. However much money there is, wire it over first. If the situation goes on, Tillman Constructions will go bankrupt, upon which we get nothing. Not only that, but we'll also be massively in debt. All Alex wanted was to survive their current predicament and seek another project. Erica had no choice but to check the balance on Naomi's debit cards first. Only then did she find that Naomi still had over 4 million in her bank account, of which she kept 1 million and transferred the rest to Alex. Alex then quickly came to the finance department and had the money credited into the company's bank account to alleviate the problem of unpaid salaries. There wasn't much money left in the finance department's bank account, so the money Erica gave Alex was only enough to pay last month's wages. Still, he breathed a soft sigh of relief. Next, he'd have to work hard to negotiate business deals and get the projects going. Upon receiving a phone call from Grigori, Anastasia surmised that Alex had run out of money. The money Alex had credited into the company's bank account was probably all Naomi and Erica had left, what would eventually become Oftelman Constructions. Anastasia decided to put the matter aside first and let Alex be distressed over it. He brought this on himself after all, she thought. Having no money left for leisure spending, Erica came home from the outside with a weary look on her face. She called Mrs. Garner over and had the latter cook dinner for her. Well, I guess I'll lay her off after she gets her paycheck at the end of this month. Chapter 540 Mrs. Garner, it's near the end of the month. From next month onward, you don't have to come anymore, Erica said to Mrs. Garner. Mrs. Garner nodded. Yes, Miss Erica, 
Then she asked tentatively, Miss Erica, the man who was outside yesterday is here again. Is he related to you? Erica instantly changed her countenance with a ferocious look in her eyes. Don't let him and he's just a beggar seeing that she would be laid off in a few days, Mrs. Garner decided to start carrying out her plan. And besides, the Tillman family no longer had much money left, so she had to extort a pretty penny from Erica while the latter still had some money. Suddenly, she tossed the piece of rag in her hand onto the floor and said to Erica, he isn't a beggar, Miss Erica. He's your biological father, isn't he? Erica was so shocked by her words that the cell phone she had just taken out slipped from her grasp and fell onto her lap. She sharply turned to stare at Mrs. Garner, asking, What are you talking about? Stop hiding it from me, Miss Erica. I overheard your conversation with him. You're not Mr. Tillman's daughter, but the daughter of Madam and that guy, right? Anastasia Tillman is the real and only daughter of the Tillman family. T, that's nonsense. Who allowed you to spew that nonsense? Erica stood up with a ferocious expression. Try saying that nonsense again if you dare. Mrs. Garner was a servant, but she had the bearing of a shrew. With her hands on her hips, she argued, Miss Erica, if you want me to keep my mouth shut, you've got to silence me with money. If not, I'll go around telling people about it. Let's see if you'll still be able to stay in the Tillman family then. In fact, Erica was indeed afraid that she would do so. She immediately implored in a soft voice, Mrs. Garner, you've worked for our family for a dozen years, during which time we've never mistreated you. Could you please not go around telling people about it? Please, however, Mrs. Garner replied uncompromisingly, you saw with your own eyes how your mother had treated me over the last dozen years. Not only am I doing the housekeeping for the entire household for such meager wages, but I'm ordered around by you guys like a slave. Miss Erica, there's no way you can brush me off with peanuts. Erica was taken aback. She never thought that her parentage was going to be brought to light. If Mrs. Garner were to tell Anastasia about it, she wouldn't even have the right to inherit Tillman. Constructions. Mrs. Garner, I don't have money with me right now. My dad's company is running into problems, so I've given all my money to the company. Mrs. Garner wasn't a kind person, though. She counted on the money to live out her life in retirement. I want a million every cent of it. Take your time to think about it, Miss Erica. I want to see the money by tomorrow afternoon. For an instant, a murderous flicker flashed across Erica's eyes. In her mind's eye, Mrs. Garner was just a low-class servant. And now, not only did the latter have the nerve to blackmail her for money, but she even demanded one million from her. Okay, I'll get the money ready by tomorrow afternoon, she replied, pretending to compromise with Mrs. Garner. All right then, I'll wait for your phone call. Don't play any tricks on me, Miss Erica. I'm not afraid of anything, replied Mrs. Garner. Then she took off her apron and threw it onto the floor, saying cockily, I've had enough of working for your family. Mr. Tillman was relatively nice to me, but you and your mother never treated me as a human. Sorry, Erica apologized. What's the use of saying sorry? Just give me the money. Bear in mind that I want one million, said Mrs. Garner before she picked up her bag and left. After Mrs. Garner left, Erica no longer concealed the murderous look in her eyes. How dare a low-class servant threaten me? This easily gave her an urge to kill. Such a person doesn't deserve to live in this world. Sitting on the sofa, she began to plan on killing Mrs. Garner. Mrs. Garner is childless. Even if she dies in some remote place, nobody will know about it. Meanwhile, in the hospital's conference room, Anastasia's subordinates in the finance department were sitting across from her. Since Elliot didn't like her to meet Alex, she could only have meetings with her subordinates in the hospital. Miss Tillman, we've collected all the evidence of Alex Hunter's embezzlement of the company's funds, Anastasia replied. Keep the evidence and put it aside for the time being. This amount of money isn't enough to make Alex pay the price. There's one more thing. We found that Silver Star Enterprise has an outstanding payment of as much as 30 million. 
We've called the company, and they'll credit the money into our company's bank account at the end of the month. Chapter 541. Is that so? Anastasia frowned. A scheming look began to form in her eyes. She said, "Mr. Lewinsky, go back to Tillman Constructions with your men first. I'm gonna hand the finance department over to Alex. I've got to devote myself to looking after my dad." Gregory was startled for a moment before he nodded. Okay. After the meeting ended, Anastasia asked Gregory to stay. She said to him, "Mr. Lewinsky, please help me keep a close eye on the accounts." Gregory understood what she meant. I got it, Miss Tillman. After the subordinates left, Anastasia picked up her phone and dialed Alex's number. Hey, Anastasia, is there anything? Alex sounded somewhat excited. Well, I have to devote myself to taking care of my dad, so I may not have time to care about the company's finances anymore. I'm gonna hand the company's finances back to you. Dad's condition matters more than anything else. Anastasia, you can leave the company to me with peace of mind. I'll definitely save the company from its hopeless situation. All right, you can rehire your former subordinates into the finance department. My people are gonna leave the department. Alex replied, "No problem. Thank you so much, Anastasia." Inwardly, though, he was overjoyed now that Anastasia was going to keep her hands off Tillman Constructions. The whole company would fall under his complete control. Oh, by the way, the Silver Star Enterprise still owes us thirty million, so take note of it. Anastasia reminded him, "Thirty million? Yeah. All right. What a timely help it is. As it happens, the company needs the money to stay afloat. All right. That's all." Anastasia said before hanging up. Alex clenched his fists excitedly in his office. Not only was the finance department back in his hands, but the company was going to receive a huge sum of payment. To him, this would really solve the urgent situation. However, after he was happy for a few seconds, his eyes suddenly darkened. If he could take the thirty million away, the money would be enough for him to start his own business. And besides, could Tillman Construction still be saved? There was no way the few small projects could sustain the company for long, so it wouldn't take long before the company went bankrupt. In other words, the 301 million would only go down the drain if it was invested into the company. So why don't I keep the 30 million in my hands instead? This will be a real cash flow. Alex had long been impatient to abandon his position as Tillman Construction's president. Whoever wants to be president can take up the position. Luckily, he had a secret trick up his sleeve last time. The agreement to transfer Naomi's shares included an additional clause added by him, whereby he could give up his rights to the shares any time. In the end, Erica would be the only person who had to bear the consequences of Tillman Construction's bankruptcy. By then, he would divorce her and live in another city with Haley and the money. Now that's an enjoyment. He took everything into account as reality forced him into doing so. It had only been less than two weeks since his appointment as president, but he had learned how difficult it was to run a company. He was already mentally and physically exhausted thanks to all kinds of troubles. If he were to keep on working as the company's president, he might end up suffering from heart disease. For the sake of his health, he decided to quit. Meanwhile, Anastasia was standing next to Francis' sickbed in the hospital. She sincerely hoped that he could wake up immediately and see the looks and ambitions of those around him. Dad, I'll make them pay the price. She whispered softly to him. That very afternoon, Alex summoned his former subordinates back. Silver Star Enterprise promised to credit the money into Tillman Construction's bank account by 10 o'clock a.m. tomorrow, but to Alex's surprise. They credited the money before the off work hours. Sitting before his laptop, Alex looked at the thirty million in Tillman Construction's bank account with his eyes full of greed. With his capabilities, it wouldn't be difficult to extract the thirty million. After all, Tillman Construction's needed money for everything right now. As long as he cooked the books a little bit, it would be easy for him to extract the money. Moreover, he was experienced in this. Meanwhile, Erica was also on pins and needles at home. 
She couldn't share the matter with anyone other than Naomi. She dared not even tell Alex about it. There was no other way but to kill Mrs. Garner to bury the secret forever. It was obvious at a glance that her biological father had a plebeian mentality. As long as she gave him a little money, he would promise to keep the secret forever. Mrs. Garner was different though. Even if she took the money, there was no guarantee that she wouldn't tell Anastasia the secret after she finished spending all the money in the future. Chapter 542 By then, she would be able to gee of money from Anastasia. Mrs. Garner was such a greedy person that Erica would only put her mind at rest if the former vanished completely from the face of the earth. Now that Naomi wasn't by her side, she had to make all the decisions on her own. Moreover, she inherited Naomi's ruthless side. She had no other way out. She had to snuff out the secret. If her parentage were to come to light, she would lose all the glory that belonged to her. Just then, it occurred to her that she hadn't been intimate with Alex for a long time. The thought made her crave his company tonight, so she dialed his number, wanting to have dinner with him in the evening. Alex agreed. He would do his best at playing the part of her husband before the 30 million fell into his hands. What gave him the nerve to target the 30 million now was the current lack of oversight on Tillman Constructions. Anastasia was putting her heart and soul into saving Francis, who couldn't regain consciousness, whereas Erica knew nothing about business. This was a great opportunity for him. Just then, Erica said, Alex, I'm afraid that it's gonna be difficult for my mom to be removed from suspicion. Anastasia refuses to let her off, whereas my dad's still comatose. So, you've got to stay by my side and help me, okay? She dared not look down on Alex anymore now that she had to depend on him. I'll help you through everything, of course. Now that you've given me the power to run the company, I'm not gonna let you down, Alex replied. Erica raised her wine glass. I love you, Alex. I love you too, Alex clinked glasses with her. That night, Alex stayed at Erica's place. She grabbed his cell phone and wanted to take a look at its messages, only to find that it was locked with a passcode. They were already husband and wife, but Alexa didn't give her open access to his phone. Alex, what's your phone's passcode? Wanna check something? She scared him. Alex stretched out his hand and took his phone from her, asking, what do you want to check? Let me help you. Seeing that the phone was back in his hands, Erica couldn't help but pout her lips. Alex, why don't you just tell me the passcode? Alex held her for a moment with a smile. It's not that I don't want to tell you the passcode. It's just that my phone contains a lot of stuff about the company, so I'm afraid that you might delete them by accident. Trust me. You are the only woman I love the most. Erica was inwardly speechless for a moment. Like hell, I'll believe you, shed hot. Alex was merely married to her, but the woman he loved the most was Anastasia. It was just that he couldn't get his hands on the ladder. The night passed, and Alex went to work in the morning. Early in the morning, Erica got a phone call from Mrs. Garner, who at her if she had prepared the money. When Erica heard this, a hint of a sneer flickered across her eyes. Mrs. Garner, I borrowed the money, but my friend asked us to go somewhere to get it. Let me fetch you and take you there. Just transfer the money into my bank account. Erica replied, I don't have that much money on my debit card. I had my friend to 100000 in cash at a place where you have to go and get the money yourself. I'll transfer the money on my card into your bank account once we get there. Mrs. Garner wasn't a highly educated person, after all. Hearing that the money was ready, she naturally believed it. All right then, come and fetch me. Erica left home by car and found a well-hidden place. It was a beach she once visited. There was hardly a soul on the beach, but it had a very high cliff, making it the best place for her to strike. She picked Mrs. Garner up, looking as she dared not offend the latter. Here, have some water, Mrs. Garner. It'll be quite a journey, Mrs. Garner asked warily. Why do we have to go so far away? That friend of mine runs a hotel by the sea. I have to go to her hotel to get the money, knowing that Erica had many friends. Mrs. Garner didn't doubt her words. Thinking that she could enjoy the scenery at the seaside, she was in a good mood. Miss Erica, 
Where is your mom actually? She asked curiously. Naomi was taken away by the police at the hospital, but Erica had never told Mrs. Garner that the former had been arrested, so Mrs. Garner was still unaware that Naomi was now in prison. My mom is taking care of my dad, oh. In that case, how is your dad, oh? One mean Mr. Tillman. Mrs. Garner hurriedly corrected herself. Chapter 543 He's still unconscious, Erica said indifferently. With that, Mrs. Garner stopped talking. As Erica turned to look at her, disgust flashed through her eyes. Firstly, she drove into a seaside path surrounded by reeds. At this sight, Mrs. Garner commented in surprise, Your friend owns a hotel here? No, we made an appointment to meet here. With so much money, she has to find a hidden place to give it to me or it'll be bad if someone steals it from us, Erica explained while deliberately dialing her phone. But in fact, there would be not answer as she called her other phone which she usually left in her house. Oh no, my friend isn't answering. Let's go over and see if she has arrived, Erica suggested pretentiously. For the sake of money, Mrs. Garner didn't think much about her words and believed her. Hence, they drove all the way into a hill with the sea in the distance and a shore full of dangerous reefs. As Erica parked her car in a thicket and dialed her friend's phone again, Mrs. Garner immediately looked over, Haley, are you here yet? What? You didn't have time to wait for me. So, where did you keep the money? Why did you leave it there? Okay, I get it. I'll take it myself then. Once Erica finished speaking and hung up the phone, she said, Mrs. Garner, my friend left the money somewhere, so let's go and check. Mrs. Garner nodded and followed her elderly way to the edge of the cliff. Erica pointed to a stone and said, My friend left the money behind that stone. Let's go over and see whether it's there. At first, Mrs. Garner was walking behind her, but Erica took out a card and suddenly threw it beside the bush. Oh no, Mrs. Garner, my card has been blown away. Hurry and help me pick it up. It's actually for you. When Mrs. Garner saw the card, Shinestonly rushed over to pick it up without hesitation. Then Erica seized the opportunity and took advantage of Mrs. Garner's moment of distraction to cruelly shove her to the bottom of the cliff two meters away. Mrs. Garner waved her hand in horror to grab at something, but her hands only grasped at air and she was soon swallowed by the raging sea below. Seeing that she had succeeded, Erica lay on the edge of the cliff and looked around for a while. Then, she finally breathed a sigh of relief and said while clutching her chest, you were asking for it, so don't blame me. She sat and watched for a long time, but she didn't see Mrs. Garner's body at all. From the looks of the dark sea current, it was impossible for the person involved to float, let alone survive. Even if Mrs. Garner was discovered and they interrogated Erica, she could just make up an alibi. As Mrs. Garner had no children and lived all by herself, it was reasonable for her to jump into the sea and end her own life out of loneliness. As Erica drove home, she felt completely relaxed. She had finally solved one of her biggest troubles, and no one would ever discover her parentage again. Along the way home, she acted as though nothing happened and continued to eat, drink, and have fun. Last night, Alex told her that the company's situation had improved. Now, she could simply wait for the profits to come rolling in from the company and make herself a fortune with peace of mind. In the company, Alex began to prepare for the transfer and embezzlement of the 30 million. He planned to fake a negotiation with a dummy company, then send the money over to that company before having it wired back to himself. The money could then be considered as part of their company's deficit. On the other hand, Haley was not enjoying herself in Alex's apartment. She had now lost her sense of taste and smell, which greatly inconvenienced her life. After she got up early this morning, she went to the mirror and admired her beauty before moving on to a detailed skin care routine. Suddenly, she felt a few bumps on her forehead with a hint of bruises. Although it couldn't be seen easily, the protruding bumps on her face were a little obvious. What's this? Haley stretched out her hand and covered her forehead, not daring to take a closer look all of a sudden. As she previously had a flat forehead, 
she went for a Botox injection. Chapter 544 Haley took a deep breath and checked the bumps. The more she looked at it, the angrier she became, and she even felt a little frightened. Were the side effects starting to appear? No, she didn't have the money to repair and maintain her face now. It took her a long time before she barely managed to cover these bumps with makeup, but she knew that if she didn't take care of her face, she would have even more problems in the future. At the beginning, she spent nearly $2 million on plastic surgery, and some of these procedures required follow-up appointments after three months. Back then, she had Elliot's black card that she could spend as much as she wanted. However, she didn't expect that she would be ruthlessly driven out by him one day. Haley looked at herself in the mirror, feeling hatred and adoration for her face. At the same time, she became even more jealous of Anastasia's natural beauty, while she had to always be frightened and afraid that she would lose hers at any time. Early in the morning, Anastasia received a call from the police as Naomi's lawyer wanted to see her. However, she didn't really want to meet them as Naomi's matter was not over yet. The reason why she delayed her father's resuscitation and the pills found in his mouth were all related to Naomi. Before collecting all necessary evidence, she wouldn't accuse her yet. She wouldn't be merciful this time either. Even if Naomi was her stepmother, she wouldn't go easy on her. In the afternoon, Naomi's lawyer contacted Erica, and she directly took the lawyer to the hospital to meet Anastasia. Erica anxiously wished for her mother to be released as well, so Anastasia had no choice but to face them directly. In the conference room, the lawyer talked to Anastasia on behalf of Naomi, while Erica sat aside and listened. Miss Tillman, Miss Lowell is your stepmother and has raised you since you were a child. The lawyer began, intending to persuade Anastasia in a reasonable way. However, Anastasia scoffed before he even finished his sentence. Mr. Yale, before you persuade me, you should ask how my stepmother treated me when I was younger. Otherwise, it'll be a waste of your time, Elias Yale couldn't help but push his glasses up and glance at Erica. For the sake of her mother, Erica became meek all of a sudden. Anastasia, I know my mother was not a good person, but can you let her out in consideration of her taking care of dad for so many years and their relationship as a married couple? She's too old for this. Anastasia said emotionlessly, Now, you think your mother is too old to suffer, but does that mean I deserve to be kicked out of my house by her when I was young? Also, you chased me out like this five years ago, and we still haven't dealt with that matter yet. Erica gulped subconsciously. Never once had she thought that she and her mother would end up in such a predicament, or she would have been kinder to Anastasia. Miss Tillman, perhaps you are mistaken. According to Miss Lowell, she only hoped to save her husband from his coma not to murder him, Elias said calmly. Mr. Yale, the evidence is in my hands. The hospital has the identification certificate which can determine if those drugs were meant to save a person or end their life. If you have any questions, I can tell you the names of those drugs and you can inquire with an expert about them. If you want to clear her of the crime, my advice is you should convince her to plead guilty instead Anastasia retorted coldly. As she listened to their conversation, Erica broke into a cold sweat. Although Anastasia was never an easy target in the task, she realized that she was even more of a threat now. Anastasia, I'm begging you, please let mom go on the behalf of her taking care of dad for so many years. I'll do anything you say, all right? I apologize to you on behalf of my mother. As long as you let her go, will definitely return the favor in future, Erica had already let go of Aldi future, Erica had already let go of all her pride. As long as her mother could be released, she was willing to humbly beg Anastasia. However, to Anastasia, it was useless even if Erica got on her knees and begged her. She said coldly, I'm busy, I have to take care of dad, you should leave. Chapter 545 Anastasia, Erica stretched out her hand to pull her back, but Anastasia raised her hand in disgust. Don't touch me, she said scornfully. 
Her gaze startled Erica, and she didn't dare to touch her anymore. As she looked at Anastasia, all she felt was resentment. As Anastasia didn't give them a chance, Elias felt that this was a tricky case as well. As he sorted out the documents, he remarked, Miss Erica, your mother's case is not an easy one. Please, Mr. Yale, you must help my mom and find a way to save her. I can give you all the money you need, Erica begged anxiously. Your mother's side is very unfavorable, and your sister isn't letting up at all. Now, the only way is to wake your father as soon as possible and ask him to come forward to solve this matter. He and your mother have been married for more than 20 years, so he might rescind the charges. A glimmer of hope flashed in Erica's eyes at his words, but it was quickly replaced by panic. No, Francis would not necessarily let them go if he woke up. After they changed his will and divided his company's equity, and with the evidence that her mother was harming him, what if he didn't let them go? Therefore, Erica would rather Francis never woke up from his coma. My dad may not wake up anymore, so let's forget about this. You should come up with another plan. After Erica finished speaking, she decided to go and visit Francis. Having received Anastasia's orders, the nurses would not simply disclose Francis' condition to outsiders. Hence, even Erica did not know about the improvement in his condition. She stood in front of the bed and looked at his face. Even though she had been raised by him for more than 20 years, she did not feel any trace of gratitude toward him at all. From the fact that she dared to deal with Mrs. Garner, it was clear that she had already lost all affection for him. Erica left without staying for long and went straight to Tillman Constructions to see how the company was doing, as Alex had told her that things were getting better. When she walked into his office and saw him signing some documents, she leaned over and hugged him affectionately. Looks like you're busy, Alex. Yeah, Alex placed the documents down and lifted his head to look at her. What brings you here? I was trying to beg Anastasia to let mom go, but I didn't expect her to be so determined to put mom in jail. Alex, what do you think I should do? Erica asked in hopes of discussing this matter with him. Alex didn't care about Naomi at all and thought it was best for her to take all of the blame so that he and Erica could live a comfortable life. Erica, Anastasia has evidence of mom's crime with her. We can't save her. If you have the opportunity to see her, you should ask her not to worry and stay there for a few years. We'll wait for her to come out. What? You want my mom to stay in jail for a few years? His words startled Erica. Seeing that being gentle wasn't working, Alex could only speak harshly. What else? If your mom doesn't take the blame for this crime, it'll be over for all of us. Besides, it was her idea to murder your dad in the first place. Erica felt despair, but she couldn't leave Alex. She truly envied Anastasia for being able to make a man like Elliot do anything for her. On the other hand, why was the man she met so cold-hearted? Erica, think about it. If your mom doesn't take the blame, then you'll be one of the culprits of the murder. At most, I'm a foil, not the mastermind. But when your father fell into a coma, the mastermind had to be either you or your mom, so if your mom doesn't go to jail, it would be you. You're still so young. Can you stand staying in prison? But mom, Erica was about to rebuke when Alex spoke again. Your mom has had a good life for more than 20 years. She can survive it, but I feel sorry for you. You're only 24 years old. You have a lot of time left instead of wasting your life away in that dark cell. If your mom loves you, she will take the blame for you. Erica's mind was inundated with fear at this point. She truly didn't want to go to jail, to the point where she'd rather take her own life. After all, it would drive her crazy. All right, I'll be meeting mom tomorrow. I, I'll talk to her then. In the end, Erica only cared about herself. Chapter 546 Erica felt that Alex had a point. If her mother didn't take the blame, she would have to bear the guilt along with her. Hence, it was only if Naomi confessed to her crimes and cleared Erica's accusations would she be able to have a good life. Stop working overtime and come home with me tonight. I miss you, 
Erica was a little afraid of spending the night alone as she had just pushed Mrs. Garner into the sea that morning. Besides, she knew that Mrs. Garner had no chance of survival. Would she turn into a ghost to haunt her at night? She needed his luck. Tonight, I, Alex had just agreed to have dinner with Haley ten minutes ago and sleep over at her place that night. Alex, I need you. Can you stay with me tonight? Erica embraced him. I'm too scared to sleep alone. Seeing that he couldn't refuse, he could only agree to her. While Erica was in the restroom, Alex sent a message to Haley saying that he had to cancel their date that night. At that moment, Haley had already hurriedly dressed up for her romantic night with Alex. Now that he was not coming, her mood was ruined. Is Erica pestering him? Mockery flashed in her eyes at that thought. Is she trying to pick a fight with me? She continued to bombard Alex with messages telling him to turn down Erica and come to her side before she got angry. Alex was caught in the middle of two women fighting for his favor. If it were in the past, he might have thought that it was his fortune, but now he only felt irritated. While Erica used the restroom, he began to come up with a plan for divorce as well. If not, it would be troublesome if Erica refused to leave him after he got his hands on the money. He felt that Erica seemed to be uneasy that night, as if she had done something wrong. Though she said that she was afraid to spend the night alone, Alex thought that this was an opportunity to lead her into making a mistake. He had a relatively young assistant from the finance department who was also quite handsome and had a sly and brava personality that he could take advantage of. When Erica was getting off work, Alex anxiously told her that he had to meet a client and might only be able to come back from Belrose the next morning. Alex. I'll go with you. No, this is an urgent matter. I wouldn't have time to stay with you even if you come along, and it's not convenient for us if you're there, but, Erica, if you're scared at night, just give me a call, Alex. Before Erica could stop him, Alex had already gotten into the car and left. As she watched the sunset in the distance, she began to feel a chill down her spine as her mind filled with Mrs. Garner's horrified expression as she fell into the water. Her grip tightened around her clothes in fear as she got into her car and wondered, who should I look for tonight? Who can stay with me? She then thought of Haley, the only person who was still in contact with her. With that, she instantly reached for her phone and dialed Haley's number. Hello? Haley, are you free tonight? I want to invite you to come and spend a night at my house, tonight? I'm not free, though. I'm going to meet a friend later. What friend? Is it important? Can you cancel your plans and meet with me? I'll treat you to a feast and we can go to a bar after. I really can't. It's a really important friend of mine. I'm sorry, Erica. Have fun at the bar. Haley made it clear that she wouldn't be able to come. After all, she had a date with Alex that night. As she sat in her car, Erica felt herself tremble. She could only drive aimlessly around the city, but as it started to get late, she called Alex, who was by Haley's side at the same time. He comforted her before telling her that one of his employees was going to the Tillman residence to deliver some documents. How about this, Erica? I'll ask my assistant to chat with you first. If there is nothing else, I'm hanging up, saying that he ended the call. Hence, Erica could only contact his assistant. It was then that she heard an attractive and young male voice. Miss Tillman, I'm on my way to your house. Where are you? Immediately, she felt her heart. Skip a beat. This assistant's voice sounds so pleasing. And he seems young too. Chapter 547. I'm almost home. What about you? I'm on my way there. Okay, then I'll wait for you. Ten minutes later, Erica opened the door for the suited young man with documents in hand. The appearance of this young man was considered to be above average. Suddenly, her eyes brightened as an idea popped into her mind. Make this assistant stay the night with her as she was afraid of the traces of Mrs. Garner in the house that would make her feel as though Mrs. Garner was still by her side. Miss Tillman, I'll leave the documents here. Since I still have something to do, hold it. What's your name? Erica stopped him. My name is Oscar. You have a nice name, Oscar. I happen to be slightly bored now, 
So how are we to have a seat and keep me company? She took the initiative to make him stay. However, it was no coincidence for Oscar to bring the documents to Erica as Alex had promised him a hundred thousand for him to seduce Erica and to hand him evidence of this affair. To Oscar, it was as though he struck gold as he didn't have to lift a finger for things to progress the way he wanted. He was but a victim in all of this matter if Erica was the one who made the first move. Noticing the frivolous expression in her eyes, Oscar asked, Miss Tillman, wouldn't it be inappropriate for me to stay? As long as the both of us keep our mouths shut, it wouldn't be an inappropriate matter. Saying that, Erica stood up and poured Oscar a glass of wine. Oscar, do you perhaps have that girlfriend? Nope, that's great. For a second there, I was afraid your girlfriend would get jealous because of this. Erica realized that compared to Alex, Oscar was much more pleasing to the eyes. She had been feeling lonely as Alex had been treating her coldly recently. Hence, to appease her loneliness, she desperately wanted a man's comfort. Okay, then I'll accompany you tonight, Miss Tillman. Oscar had his own ideas regarding Erica as well. To him, she was the daughter of Francis Tillman, which meant that she was a woman of wealth. Happy at how interested he was, she said, I'm feeling a little hot right now. I'll go upstairs to take a shower. Ten minutes later, she came back downstairs in sexy lingerie. Oscar, on the other hand, had set up his camera in one of the corners of the room. Miss Tillman, you're am I pretty? The confident Erica sat on the sofa with her eyes on him. Yes, you're very pretty, Oscar praised. When she heard his compliment, her eyes lit up with hints of joy in them. Then, stay the night with me. But Miss Tillman, what would I be doing? He feigned ignorance. Suddenly, she boldly held the man in her embrace. I need you, Oscar. Tonight, I am all yours, Miss Tillman. I don't think this is appropriate. Don't reject me, she asked proactively. Miss Tillman, we can't do this. Oscar, if you try to refuse me again, I will fire you first thing the next morning, Erica sat domineeringly and took advantage of her position to pressure the man. However, this was exactly what Oscar wanted as he needed to act as an unwilling participant. Thus, the night ended with Hershamlessly having an affair with him. When morning came, Oscar left early to give the video of the affair, which had been edited to only show Erica's face, to Alex. After Alex had paid Oscar post-haste, Oscar resigned that very morning. With a cold yet pleased expression in his eyes, Alex waited for the 30 million to be laundered in his office. If all went perfectly, the money would be safe in his offshore account as it would be completely untraceable in the country. Finally, Alex's other phone received a notification. Silently counting the number of zeros, he let out a satisfied smile as he could now quit the wreck that was Tillman Constructions. Finally, the money is in my hands now. Then, he took out a contract from his drawer before he dialed Erica's number. Hello, Alex. Erica's voice was tinged with slight guilt. Chapter 548 Are you home? I'll be coming back, as there's something I have to discuss with you. I am. I'll wait for you, Erica replied gently. With the video and contract in hand, Alex left to meet Erica. Currently, the Tillman residence looked deserted. In the past, Mrs. Garner would open the door for him whenever he came home. Now, he had to enter the password himself to open the door. Upon entering the house, Alex found Erica, who was waiting for his arrival, sitting on the sofa. Erica was speculating that Alex wanted to discuss the future of the company with her. Where's Mrs. Garner? Alex asked curiously. She quit and went back home since I don't need a servant when I'm by myself, Erica explained. Since yesterday afternoon, she had been watching the news to see if there were any reports of dead bodies found in the sea, but not once did the image of Mrs. Garner appear on the news. This made her think that Mrs. Garner might have disappeared from the face of the earth forever, or perhaps Mrs. Garner had already been chewed to bits by the sharks. Regardless, Mrs. Garner no longer existed in this world. Erica, were you afraid of being by yourself last night? Alex asked as soon as he sat down. I was fine, 
I wasn't that afraid when I thought of you, Erica looked at Alex flirtatiously. After Alex looked at the woman as though he was watching a theater play, he took out his iPad and played a certain video. Immediately after, the room was filled with what Erica had said the night before. If you try to refuse me again, I will fire you first thing the next morning, frightened. Erica blanched at once and tried to grab the iPad from his hand like a madman while shamelessly glaring at him. Why? Why do you have this? Alex closed the video before he sneered, you still have the nerve to ask me? When you were the one who had slept with one of my employees. Erica Tillman, are you playing some sort of sick game of infidelity with me? What do you want? Red with anger, Erica gritted her teach as she felt she had fallen into a trap. Alex said nothing further as he threw a contract right in front of Erica. Sign it. What is this? Erica took the contract, all the while glaring at Alex. It's good news. I'll be returning all of my shares in Tillman Constructions to you. From now on, you will be holding 701% of the company's shares, as I'll be quitting that wretch of a company, a look of disgust appeared on his face. The company was still profitable back when your father was still around, but now, it's losing millions every day. I'm not going to accompany you to saddle these debts. You, Alex, I don't get how the company operates. I know it's my fault. Please, don't go through with the divorce. Don't leave me, okay? Erica became anxious all of a sudden. Should the company continue to lose money like this, bankruptcy would be unavoidable. The shares she held in the company would amount to nothing in the end. Do you think I'll still want to be with you? I can't even stand the sight of a dirty woman like you. Now, if you don't want this video to be uploaded online for the world to see, sign it. Erica broke down. Gritting her teeth, she trembled all over. I'm not signing this. You were the one who caused the company to be in this state. Why should I be the one to bear these debts alone? If you want to point fingers, point them at Anastasia, as this was all her doing and has nothing to do with me. Alex refused to admit that his capabilities were not up to par. Nevertheless, he wished to have nothing to do with Tillman Constructions anymore since he had already gotten a sum of money from the company. Sign it, Alex threatened once more by bringing attention to the iPad in his hand. Otherwise, I'll upload this online. The whole world will see just how shameful you are then. No, Erica was on the verge of going crazy, as she knew that her life would be ruined the minute that video was uploaded online. She would never be able to hold her head up high ever again. Caved to Alex's threats, Erica could only pick up the pen and sign on the dotted line before stamping her fingerprint next to her signature. After Erica finished signing the documents, Alex took one copy before he said coldly, Erica Tillman, don't bother me from now on. Your father's affairs have nothing to do with me. I shouldn't need to remind you that I can easily upload this video anytime I want if you named me as a participant in the revision of the will. Chapter 549 With her heart wretched, Erica glared at Alex's indifferent expression and noticed just how intense the feeling of hatred could be, so much so that she wanted to end his life right at this very spot. Smugly, Alex raised the iPad in his hand. Don't upset me. I'll see you tomorrow at the county clerk's office to end this marriage, looking at the man's shadow gradually vanishing from sight. Erica covered her face and bawled her eyes out as she hadn't the slightest idea of what to do now. The pressure of having the loss-making Tillman constructions in her hands was just like having a mountain coming down on her. She never knew just how miserable it would be to hold the shares of this company. If the company went bankrupt, she would never be able to pay off the astronomical debts even if she had several lifetimes. However, armed at her despair, Erica thought of someone who could get her out of this mess, Anastasia. Right now, only Anastasia was capable enough to salvage Edelman Constructions from the brink of bankruptcy. Hence, she left her house with her bag in hand and went straight to the hospital. In the hospital, Anastasia had just left the specialist's office in a good mood, as her father's recovery was above her expectations. Furthermore, 
the doctor had assured her that it was only a matter of time before her father would regain consciousness now. She was relieved after hearing the doctor's diagnosis, as her father's illness had been a great source of distress for her all this while. Miss, wait, you have to check in, one of the nurses at the nurse's station shouted. As Erica had coincidentally bumped into Anastasia, she rushed over to Anastasia without caring to register herself for a visit. Anastasia, you have to help me. What is it? Anastasia replied, indifferently. You have to save dad's company. Alex wants to divorce me. He doesn't care about the company anymore. Right now, the company is losing millions as days go by. Please, you have to save the company. I don't want to see it go bankrupt. Erica's eyes grew red from anxiety. However, Anastasia sneered. What you want is to not be saddled with debts. Taken aback, Erica bit her lip and said, Do you really have the heart to watch as our dad's company goes bankrupt? I've been counting the days for the company to go bankrupt so that those insatiable hyenas can have a taste of being in huge debt, said Anastasia while glaring at Erica. Erica didn't have the guts to look Anastasia in the eyes. Then, what would it take for you to save the company? Make me the sole shareholder by transferring all of your shares to me. Only then will I consider your request. Anastasia put forward her condition. What? Erica's face grew white with anger. You want all of my shares in the company? Anastasia Tillman, don't you think you're being too greedy? The most I can give up is 20% then you can stop begging me and forget about it. By my estimation, the company would probably last for another three months before the bank comes in to liquidate the assets. With the number of shares you hold, you are sure to be millions in debt. You can spend the rest of your life paying off the debt then, Anastasia sneered. Erica's eyes lit with horror upon Anastasia's words. I'll give you five minutes to think about this. I'll be waiting in the conference room for your decision, Saying that, Anastasia left for the conference room. Erica sat on a nearby chair, looking extremely pale and haggard, as the company was now a liability that she absolutely needed to wash her hands off. However, she couldn't get over the fact of Anastasia demanding her to give up all of her shares in the company. After seconds passed, she gulped and closed her eyes before she left for the conference room with her fists clenched and the intention to compromise. Anastasia was reading the news on her phone when Erica took a seat opposite her. I can give up all of my shares to you, but you have to promise me that you'll pay me 50 million when the company starts making a profit again. Erica was still unwilling to give up. With how hard the company is struggling financially right now, you still want to be paid off. Anastasia did not agree to Erica's demand. 10 million, Erica negotiated. Forget it. Anastasia Tillman, I am also a daughter of Francis Tillman. I'll be giving up all my shares to you, yet you won't even give me 10 million, Erica said angrily. 5 million in 5 installments, but only if the company starts making a profit, Anastasia countered Erica's offer. Chapter 550 Reluctant after tolerating Anastasia time after time, Erica thought her hatred of Anastasia only grew deeper, as she felt it was Anastasia who had forced her into this situation. However, she was left with no other choice but to give up the company to Anastasia. Fine, I'll give up all of my shares to you for five million, Erica caved to Anastasia's offer, but quickly added one more demand of her own. Release my mother as well, you can give up on those thoughts. She needs to pay for what she did, Anastasia refused to budge. Tears of anger welled in Erica's eyes. She's my mother, you reap what you sow. With how much karma she has accumulated, she needs to pay the price of her actions, Anastasia replied indifferently. At Anastasia's words, Erica felt her heart jerked sharply, her hands trembling slightly, as the thought of Mrs. Garner surfaced in her mind. No, I've done nothing wrong. She tried to calm herself by convincing herself that there would be no retribution waiting for her down the line. Fine, I'll go to the company with you right now to sign the contract. She did not want to have anything to do with Tillman Constructions a second longer. Good, 
Anastasia smiled with relief in her eyes. Ultimately, she did not wish for her father's company to go bankrupt, as it was her father's life's work. Anastasia drove herself to Tillman Constructions with a black SUV following behind her. Inside the black SUV were the bodyguards Elliot had assigned for her protection. Inside Frances' office, Erica eagerly took out the contract for her shares and the equity transfer contract. After she finished signing, Anastasia also signed the transfer contract and stamped it with her fingerprint. Looking at the signed contract, Erica felt slightly reluctant but relieved at the same time as she no longer needed to worry about falling into debt. Anastasia, what are you going to do now? Erica asked deliberately out of curiosity about how her sister was going to reverse the company's situation. Naturally, Anastasia did not have the capability to do so. However, as luck would have it, she had someone backing her, someone amazing. I have my ways regarding that. You can leave now, Anastasia said. Erica herself did not wish to stay in the company any longer as well. Before she left the company, she dropped by the finance department but could not find Oscar there. Regardless, even if she did meet Oscar here, all she could do was swallow her pain alone. After Anastasia watched Erica's car leaving the company from the French window, she dialed Elliot's number. Have you gone to Tillman Constructions? Elliot asked. Yeah, Erica has given up all of her shares to me. They couldn't even handle this much. Elliot asked rhetorically before he continued, Wait for me. I'll come over right now. This sentence of his was filled with an indescribable strength that warmed Anastasia's heart. With Elliot around, she wouldn't need to worry about the company's future at all. Thirty minutes later, two armored SUVs opened up the way to the front entrance of Tillman Constructions. The domineering, black Rolls-Royce Phantom was the first in line with seven to eight luxury cars following behind. Just like this, the company's car park was filled to the brim. The employees were shocked as they watched all these vehicles from the various windows of the building. All of them started speculating just what kind of big shot had come and whether these people were the company's salvation. One of the bodyguards opened the door of the black car to reveal Elliot getting out of the car. He was dressed to the nines as he gave off a powerful presence with his black formal wear. As though following his lead, a group of people also came down from the luxury cars. They all gave a look of respect toward Elliot before following him into Tillman Constructions. It was a majestic sight to behold the group of them march with gusto behind Elliot. Anastasia knew Elliot arrived but did not know he had brought along so many guests. Just then, Elliot entered her office. Puzzled, she looked at him. Who are those people? They're all your father's former clients. They came to have a meeting with you. Anastasia blinked dumbfoundedly before feeling the warmth in her heart gradually coming to the surface. Looks like he's already planning to resume the company's projects. Then, Elliot took her hand in his. Let's go and listen to what they have to say. Chapter 551. They're my dad's clients. Shouldn't I be treating them well? Anastasia was unsure of what she should do. There's no need for that since all of them are more than happy to continue working with your father's company. Elliot curled his lips into a smile. Anastasia clearly sensed the arrogance in his tone. After all, this man was the reason these people were here to seek a collaboration with Tillman Constructions. Currently, the conference room was filled to the brim with all these people. As Anastasia sat in the foremost seat with Elliot by her side, each of the participants came up to her and introduced themselves briefly before they proceeded to discuss with the employees regarding their respective projects, such as the supply of materials and conditions for working together in the future. Without lifting a finger, Anastasia watched the company come back to life. It was all thanks to Elliot that the company that was on the brink of bankruptcy was so full of vitality right now. Miss Tillman, are you satisfied with my pricing? You'd be pleased to know this is the highest price we've ever offered to any company, since the man had already said this much, Anastasia nodded with a faint smile. I am very satisfied. Miss Tillman, I still have several properties under construction. I'll be using your company for the building materials, Miss Tillman, 
we will keep a close eye on supplying Tillman constructions. As long as your company is in urgent need of raw materials, we will be the first to send them. Anastasia was all smiles as she listened to all these prominent figures. The managers of Tillman Constructions were no exception, as their smiles were even wider than that of Anastasia's. They knew the company was not only saved but would continue to grow even bigger from now on. I'll leave the rest to you all. Elliot had been patient and listening to all of them before he stood up and took Anastasia's hand. Let's go take a break. Anastasia was speechless at what Elliot suggested, as she felt it was inappropriate for her to take a break when the company was having such an important meeting. Yet, the man continued to drag her out of the conference room without an explanation. I am the president here, so I should be staying with them inside, she said begrudgingly. We can't waste time here, as we still have a lot to do, Elliot replied. When Anastasia saw they were heading to the finance department, she immediately realized it was time to recover the money Alex had embezzled from the company. Although there were still Alex's men in the department, each and every one of them wore a stern expression at the moment and dared not even take a deep breath. Miss Tillman, do you have business with us? Alex had made a transfer of 30 million. I want to see the records of that transfer. One of the men's eyes lit up. That man was Alex's only accomplice here. Alex would not let everyone know about the transfer with a sum that huge. Thus, he was the sole accomplice. You there, come here, for someone as astute as Elliot, he managed to identify the accomplice with just one look. President Pressgrave, can I help you? If you sort out all the evidence of Alex's embezzlement, I will spare you for your wrongdoings, Elliot said, his tone cold and hostile. The employee in question immediately had his face grow white in fear. President Hunter did indeed ask me to make a false account, but that money, that money is already in an overseas account and is completely untraceable. It's impossible to get that money back. I just need you to get the evidence ready, saying that Elliot patted Anastasia on her shoulder. I'll go make a phone call. He then left after Anastasia nodded in acknowledgement. After Elia left, Alex's accomplice immediately came over to Anastasia with his fear clear as day. Miss Tillman, I'm sorry. President Hunter forced me to do this. I had to do it for my family. How much did you take? Anastasia did not believe the man in front of her was innocent. I only took a million. The man hung his head sheepishly. I'll return the money to the company and sort out the evidence at once. So, Miss Tillman, Please spare me. Don't send me to jail. That will depend on whether your atonement is good enough. Should you still have something you're not telling us? I guarantee you will be going down with Alex, said Anastasia resoundingly with her eyes clear and cold. Overwhelmed with fear and awe, the employee hurriedly said, Miss Tillman, I am also a coward by nature, which is why I've recorded the conversation between me and President Hunter. I'll send the recording to you along with the evidence of his embezzlement. Chapter 552 Good, as Anastasia said that, she looked at everyone in the room and announced, I'll hunt you down if any of you informs Alex behind my back. Instantly, everyone became tense. They could already guess how Alex would end up, so nobody dared to be on his side at this time. Don't worry, Miss Tillman. None of us will inform President Hunter, said one of the older employees. Anastasia nodded after hearing his answer. At this moment, Elliot strode into the room and told her with his eyes that he had gotten back the money that Alex had embezzled. With the connections that he had, getting the money back was as easy as ABC. Now, Anastasia should also begin to prepare for Alex's arrest. The lawyers that I hired for you are on their way here now. They'll get ready with the procedures. Elliot had already handled everything for her as he wanted Alex to be thrown behind bars more than she did. Most importantly, each and every one of his lawyers were experts, so they would definitely have Alex in prison for the rest of his life. A grateful Anastasia hugged Elliot around his waist. Thank you. I really don't know how to return your favor. He kissed her on her hair before saying, that's what I'm here for. In fact, 
The reason why he did all these was not only because of her, but he was also repaying the Tillmans for being the reason for her mother's death. At this moment, Anastasia decided in her heart that she would always be by his side for the rest of her life, no matter what happened. On the other hand, Alex was having an intimate moment with Haley in the apartment. With this money, he could bring her abroad and enjoy themselves. There in no time, although she was not really into traveling abroad, she wouldn't let this chance slip when he had this large amount of money in hand. You're really impressive, Alex. Now, Erica will definitely go down with Tillman. Constructions, she said with a smile tugged on her lips. She's really an idiot. I don't think she can accomplish anything in her life. Alex greatly despised anyone like Erica. Meanwhile, Haley was so proud that she could enjoy herself with Anastasia's father's money without her knowing. Let's start our vacation at the beach first and enjoy our life to the fullest, he told her while hugging her. Okay, whatever you say. My job is only to have good food, have fun, and make you happy, she declared happily. By the way, do you know Erica's sister, Anastasia? Alex asked her as he was always curious about this. Anastasia, Haley pretended to recall. I met her a few times a long time ago. Why? He started to look at her face closely as though he was trying to find another woman through her. You truly look like her. Hearing that, she felt bitter on the inside. Why does every man that has met Anastasia get obsessed with her? Elliot is obsessed with her, and so is Alex. Why am I always her substitute? Don't tell me that you like me because I look like her. She pretended to be jealous and turned her head to the side. What? No, I don't give a damn about her. She's already another man's toy. Whose toy? A surprised Haley thought, is there anything else that I don't know about her? While grinding his teeth in anger, Alex replied, Elliot Pressgrave, Elliot Pressgrave? Isn't he the president of the Pressgrave group? She knowingly wore a puzzled face. Then, a contemptuous Alex grunted, other than all the dirty money that he has, he's actually nothing. Looking at his furious face, Haley mocked him in her mind. Is he honestly saying that when he's the one who is nothing? In her heart, no matter how many Alexes there were, they couldn't compete with one Elliot. However, she still needed to look at him with her face full of affection. I don't care who Elliot is. I just know that I love you, and don't you dare say I look like anyone again. I don't like that, okay, okay? I won't. He embraced her in his arms, but deep down, he always treated Haley as Anastasia's substitute because she really looked like Anastasia most of the time. Meanwhile, at Tillman Constructions. Chapter 553 When Anastasia heard from Ray that Alex was in his apartment with Haley, she knew that she should tell Erica about it. She needed to let her know who was the one constantly pestering Alex, spending her money without her knowledge, and making her get the cold treatment after her marriage, her best friend, Haley. If she revealed everything to her, she expected to see a heated argument between these two best friends. Although she couldn't be there in person to see it, she wanted to let Haley know the consequences of stealing another person's man. With that in mind, she took her phone and called Erica. Hello, Anastasia. What's the matter? Erica was a little nervous when she picked up the phone. Although I hate you, I still need to tell you this. Alex has been together with Haley throughout your marriage with him. They are now together in his apartment. You can go there and see it for yourself. What? Haley? Are you sure? As expected, Erica was shocked. She knew there was zero interactions between Haley and Alex. See it for yourself if it's Haley or not. I'll send you the address. As soon as Anastasia said that, she sent the address to Erica. At this moment, Erica was actually preparing to go home, but when she saw the address, she navigated to the apartment immediately. While on the way, she was screaming inside her head, how is that possible? Haley and Alex are together? But when? Don't tell me that she was with him for all those outstation nights that he told me about. And what about the money he withdrew using my card when his bank account was frozen? Was it for Haley? 
Her mind was going crazy as she recalled that Haley had only gone to Tillman Constructions once with her. Did she hook up with Alex that day? If that's the case, then they've been together for nearly three months. As to why Alex would fall for Haley, it was just a simple question her face, which she did plastic surgery on to look exactly like Anastasia. With that face, it would be an easy task to lure him, who had been longing for Anastasia all this while. When Erica reached her destination, she strode right into Alex's apartment with some other people and pressed the 18th floor button in the elevator. Just as she reached the 18th floor, she saw a janitor carrying out her duty. So, she asked the janitor, Madam, can you do me a favor and knock on the door of that room? Miss, don't you have your hands yourself? My husband is inside with another woman. If I knock on the door, they definitely will not open it. Can you help me, please? She put on a sorrowful face. Hearing that, the kind-hearted janitor answered with a righteous expression. Okay, I'll knock it for you. Then she went to knock on the door while Erica was hiding beside the wall. When Haley heard the knock, she stood up from the couch and looked through the peephole, only to see it was the janitor. Then, she reached out her hand to open the door and asked unpleasantly, Yes, however, the janitor just ignored her and turned around, walking away. Just as the puzzled Haley wanted to close the door, someone busted open the door forcefully and dashed into the apartment right away. When the two women faced each other, Haley was in total shock, while Erica was glaring at her in a fury as she didn't expect it to really be Haley. Erica, why? Haley took a step back with her hand over her mouth. At this moment, Erica was like an enraged tigress. It's really you. Did you hook up with him when I was in a relationship with him? And did you continue living with him even after I married him? A raging fire could be seen in Erica's eyes. I'm sorry, Erica, but I can explain. I, despite how smart Haley was, she was unprepared for this moment and lost her skills to defend herself. Explain what? You're really shameless, Haley. Are you even human? Erica's anger was not only because of their affair, but she also felt that she had been fooled all this while. When she and Alex were just boyfriend and girlfriend, she would show affection toward him in front of Haley all the time, telling her how much this playboy loved her and cherished her. But it turned out that they were all just jokes in Haley's eyes. Haley definitely had a good laugh at her from the beginning. As she humiliated her, she went behind her back to be lovey devey with Alex. I'm gonna f king kill you, Haley Seymour. Erica bellowed. Right then, she threw her purse and went forward to grab Haley's hair. Chapter 554. Meanwhile, Alex, who had just fallen asleep in the main bedroom, suddenly heard noises of women fighting and screaming outside. He even heard someone shouting for his help. Save me, Alex. It was Haley's voice. Hearing that, he quickly jumped out of bed and rushed out of the room, only to see two women yanking and kicking each other on the floor. One of them was Haley, and the other one was Erica. He froze in shock after seeing Erica there. Why is she here? Stop it, Erica. He bellowed before stepping into the fight to pull Erica away from Haley and push her onto the ground. With her reddened eyes, Erica glared at Haley and snapped, you shameful W.H. Ray. I'll make your life miserable. Haley, on the other hand, was tidying up her hair and touching every part of her face furtively as she was afraid that Erica had displaced the implants on her face. Are you okay, Haley? Are you hurt? Alex asked her with concern. Although Erica abhorred Alex, he still used to be her husband. So, Seeing him showing concern for another woman with her own eyes still incited hatred in her. Alex Hunter, you're both not fit to be human. You're just a CM and a Chi Chi. Rot in hell, you two. Are you done, Erica? Get lost if you're done. My relationship with Alex is none of your business, Haley said while grinding her teeth. She just wanted Erica to leave the place at once, since Erica is totally worthless in her eyes now. Haha, <laughs> Alex, are you so in love with her because she looks like Anastasia? Let me tell you, shut up, Erica. Haley glared at her, warning her. 
Ignoring her, Erica smiled with a smug look on her face and looked at Alex before saying, Do you know that her face is fake? She went for plastic surgery and had her face done based on Anastasia's face. I guess you've definitely not seen how ugly she was last time. Let me show you what she looked like. As soon as she said that, she took out her phone and started to search through her album. Even though Haley dashed to her, trying to grab her phone, Erica still found one photo of Haley's face before the plastic surgery and showed it to Alex. Take a look. Now you know how fake her face is. She has spent a few million on it. At this moment, Alex was completely stunned. He grabbed Erica's phone from her hand and saw the face in the photo. The person in the photo had a square face, which looked completely different from how Haley looked now. Is this really you? He asked Haley, whose expression was turning mad. Hearing that, Haley heaved a sigh. You said you wouldn't care about my past, Alex. Ha <laughs> ha. Her past is really splendid. She has slept with almost every man she met. You should ask her how many she has slept with before you. Haley went over and took her phone back from Alex's hand. Get out, Erica. Haley shouted while pointing at the door. Why should I get out? I still haven't asked you to return my money yet. When his bank account was frozen, he withdrew 40000 for you, right? You, gnashing her teeth, Haley answered, Yeah, I spent it all. So, what? You're really shameless. I'd like to see how long you can keep your fake face on. Are you planning to get Alex's money so that you can go fix your fake face? Erica shouted at her. You shut your f-king mouth. Haley's face was turning ferocious. Meanwhile, Alex just looked at them calmly from the side because, at this moment, he realized how spurious Haley was. Now, he had a change of plan he wouldn't be sharing a penny of his money with her anymore. Both of you get out. This is my house. Haley, pack up your stuff and get out of here. Alex was a hard-hearted person who knew the right timing to cut losses early. Instantly, Haley's face paled, and she was growing anxious. Don't listen to her bullshit, Alex. My face is fine, and it will stay the same for the rest of my life. She had poured her heart and spent so much time trying to get this man, but she had not gained any money from him yet. So, she didn't want this relationship to end this way. Get lost. I feel disgusted whenever I see your face. Alex was furious all of a sudden and looked at Haley with his eyes full of hatred. Chapter 555 Erica picked up her bag and told Alex, You think that I'll be doomed, right? I'll tell you this. I won't be saddled with debts. What are you trying to say? I've passed all my shares to Anastasia. So, Tillman Constructions is hers now, she announced proudly. I still have my way out. What? Alex's expression instantly changed after he heard her. He went up to Erica, stopped her from leaving, and asked, Anastasia took over Tillman Constructions? When was that? This morning, instantly, he turned to his room and grabbed his phone, dialing a number. All of a sudden, a furious Haley held Erica's arm. Who sent you here? She thought Erica would never find out about her relationship with Alex because she was hiding it really well. Erica swung her hand and scoffed, Anastasia told me about it. Don't you think it's really ironic? What? Haley's face took on a ghastly expression once again. It's Anastasia again? Why is she always going against me? Just then, Alex shouted from his room, Why is my money gone? Hearing that, Erica immediately realized something was up with Alex, so she spun on her heels and left the place. At the same time, Haley noticed something as well. Since Anastasia had taken over Tillman Constructions, the large sum of money that he embezzled would definitely be recovered, and he would need to bear the consequences. Now, Haley didn't want anything anymore. She just wanted to cut T.I.s with Alex completely. Disregarding everything, she was ready to leave too. At this moment, all she heard was Alex cursing in rage, noises of him breaking things, and his bellows about his missing money. This man was nothing to her anymore. With coldness in her eyes, she took her bag and left the place, as she was also tired of acting for such a long time with him. As Erica was going downstairs, 
she met a few men who were going up, and she was a little surprised by that. When she came out to the parking lot, there were several patrol cars and a few men there watching over the place. Curious, she sat in her car and wanted to see who they were arresting. After a while, she also saw Haley coming out of the apartment in dejection and leaving from the opposite direction. She stared at Haley, desperately wanting to hit her with the car when she realized how blind she was previously to be best friends with her all this while. Come to think of it now, it's so sickening that since I got married to Alex, I've been sharing the same men with her. She felt nauseous thinking about it. On the other hand, Alex was still anxiously calling the bank to check why his money was missing. The banker on the other side told him frankly that his transaction had been found to be illegal and that the bank would halt the process of recovering the money from overseas. Just as he was raving, he heard someone break into his apartment. Shocked, he rushed out of his room, and the plainclothes police who broke into his apartment jumped on him and immediately pressed him onto the floor. Alex Hunter, you're under arrest for embezzlement. You'll need to follow us back to the station for further investigation. At this moment, Alex's mind froze for a moment, and something came through his mind all of a sudden. It's a trap. It was a trap that Anastasia set for him to purposely let him embezzle that money after seeing his greediness and tricks. He was in deep regret when he realized he had fallen into Anastasia's trap and had jumped into the abyss with his own feet. The 30 million, together with the 3 million that he had embezzled previously, could get him a sentence of more than 10 years in prison. Within 15 minutes, Erica saw a few plainclothes police coming out of the apartment with a person arrested, and that person was Alex. Shocked, she saw him having his head pressed and entering the patrol car. Instantly, her brain started to figure out what was going on. Why is Alex arrested? What did he do? He told me about a 30 million sum of money previously, and he divorced me a few days after that. Since he was in the finance department and he also had a record for embezzlement, did he embezzle that 30 million too? And he's arrested now because Anastasia found out about it? At the side of a car not far away, Haley looked at Alex getting arrested in the patrol car with a cold gaze. Her eyes were emotionless as he was just a cash machine to her. Chapter 556 As Haley recalled how Alex reacted when he saw her older pictures, she was irked by his exaggerated expression. As expected, he only liked her because of her resemblance to Anastasia. Anastasia, why are you constantly on my tail? Haley grumbled. After the policeman left, Erica became anxious. She suddenly had an urge to go to the spot where she pushed Wanda down. She wanted to verify whether Wanda was still near the reef. In order to peace her mind, she hurried over there. Is Mrs. Garner dead? On the contrary, Wanda survived. Although she was a vicious person, she was fortunate enough to survive the fall. After she was pushed into the sea by Erica, she was swept to the shore by the waves. When she was found, she had been submerged in the sea for a long period of time and was sent to the nearest hospital. Even though she had been resuscitated, she had fallen into a coma. As Erica stood by the seashore and glanced at the vast ocean, which seemed like the perfect burial ground. Mrs. Garner might have perished. She stayed there for a while before leaving. Back then, when Tillman Constructions was in the news, it was about the company being on the brink of bankruptcy and how they were in arrears with their employees' pay which made the headlines. The media somehow heard rumors about it and released the news in order to boost traffic and readership. On that day, news about Tillman Construction's revival made the news. All of their employees were well compensated, and some of the biggest names in real estate had signed collaboration agreements with them. Instantly, Tillman Constructions was regarded as one of the most promising companies within its industry. The incident regarding Naomi and her daughter's online article that had caused a frenzy and put Anastasia in a bad light was overturned because of this. Subsequently, the incident of Naomi being suspected of murdering her husband and robbing his inheritance was revealed. At the same time, Anastasia's efforts to save her father were also reported. Anastasia's reputation had instantly improved and she was viewed in a good light by the netizens. 
They praised her for her good looks, her acts of filial piety, and her new status as Tillman Construction's current president. She only found out about the news while she was on her way back from the hospital. The news amused her, and she believed that it was the doing of Elliot. In actual fact, he was the one that bailed out Tillman Corporation, but he gave her all the credits. She had won praise for being a savvy president who had successfully redeemed her reputation. Although Anastasia was never bothered by how others looked at her, those nasty comments in the past did hurt her feelings. In the hospital, Francis was pushed into the ward after the doctor performed checks on him. After being in a coma for a month, he finally regained consciousness. The nurse who came into his ward noticed that his eyes were open and she walked over surprisingly. Mr. Tillman, you're awake. Immediately, she ran out to get the doctors. Two of the doctors entered the ward and performed some regular checks on him. Mr. Tillman, do you feel any discomfort? How long have I been unconscious? Francis asked with a hoarse voice. You have been unconscious for 31 days. What? It's been a month. He suddenly sat up but had to lean on the headboard as he felt weak. Where's my daughter and wife? Mr. T as Francis shut his eyes, the voices that he had last heard rang in his ears. Those voices were like a nightmare to him. The fact that Naomi and Erica tried to kill him brought him misery. When Anastasia stepped into the hospital hall, the nurse at the reception informed her delightedly, Miss Tillman, your dad is awake, for real? With a bag in her hand, she dashed over to the elevator as she couldn't wait to head upstairs and rushed all the way to her father's ward. When she saw him sitting up, she fought back the terrors of excitement and walked in. Dad, you are awake. Anastasia, you're here. Chapter 557. Dr. Leonard, how is my father's condition after he has regained consciousness? Anastasia looked at the doctor and asked, He is doing well. Besides the lack of physical strength from not taking in any food for a prolonged period of time, he's not feeling any discomfort. We will enhance Mr. Tillman's nutrition intake. Doctor, may I speak to my daughter in private? Francis asked. Of course you can. The doctor made everyone leave the room after that. The look in Francis' eyes tugged her heartstrings. Did dad discover something before he got into a coma? Dad. A lot has happened during this period of time, she said as she sat in front of him. Tell me about everything that happened after I went unconscious. He was eager to find out about everything. With that, Anastasia told him everything in detail, starting from when he got admitted into the hospital. She even told him about how shameless Naomi was without reservations. Her heart ached when she saw how up upset her father was. However, in order for him to see Naomi's true colors, she did what had to be done. Dad, don't be too upset about it. If she had the guts to hurt you, it only means that she doesn't have any feelings for you, Anastasia consoled him. As he held back his tears, he sniffled. I'd never think that she would do that to me since we have been married for more than 20 years. Anastasia, I'm a fool for not being able to tell apart who my FOs are among those that are close to me. Naomi, Erica, Alex, and Colin are the people closest to me, but they wanted me dead. Dad, you still have me. Her heart broke for him as she knew that he was agonized by the episode. After he heard his daughter, a glimmer of joy could be seen in his eyes. That's right. I still have you. I'm fortunate to have a filial daughter like you. Dad, so what do you plan to do? There's solid evidence to prove that Naomi tried to harm you and that Erica is her accomplice. It is also an undeniable fact that both of them tried to amend your will. Upon hearing that, he was in so much distress that he shut his eyes and his breathing got heavier. Dad, let's not think about it for now. Let's wait until you've recovered. If you can't bring yourself to punish them, I shall do it for you. Francis nodded. He was surprised but impressed at how artful and calm Anastasia was since she managed to apprehend Naomi and got Alex arrested while he was unconscious. Everything she had done was to seek revenge for him. He thanked the heavens for endowing him with a great daughter. Just then, a tall figure was seen standing by the door. 
It was Elliot who rushed over from the Pressgrave group upon hearing news that Francis was awake. Mr. Tillman, you're awake, Elliot said delightedly. Elliot, this is all thanks to you. Anastasia told me that you've hired medical professionals to treat me, and it was because of it that I could regain my consciousness. Francis looked at the young man gratefully. This is the least I could do, he shot a glance at Anastasia, and she turned around and met his gaze. It was as if she could sense the excitement behind his smile, which made her blush. I'm so sorry for delaying your engagement. If not for my accident, both of you would have gotten engaged. Francis felt guilty for ruining his daughter's big day. Mr. Tillman, please don't feel bad about it. The most important thing is your health. We can always pick another date for our engagement, Elliot consoled him. Francis really liked Elliot as his son-in-law. Regardless of his wealth and capability, his love for Anastasia was evident, which made him a good man. Soon after, the doctor brought some nutritious porridge over. Seeing that, Anastasia fed it to her father while Elliot waited outside. After Francis finished eating his porridge, the doctor came in, and Anastasia left the room. Looking at the poised man who was leaning against the wall opposite her, she couldn't hide her gratitude toward him. He was instrumental in helping her father regain consciousness, and at the end of the day, he deserved all the credit. Chapter 558 Thank you, Anastasia thanked Elliot. I'd have to punish you if I hear you say those words again, as he tugged her arm, she fell into his arms, and shortly after, she felt his arms around her waist. There's no need for you to thank me since that's the least I can do for my fiancé, he pecked on her red lips right after that. Their public display of affection caught the attention of a few nurses that walked past them. All of them blushed as they were captivated by his domineering disposition, which they found mesmerizing. They were envious of Anastasia's beauty and how lucky she was to end up with someone like Elliot. She must have done a lot of good deeds in her previous life to deserve him. After Anastasia found out that they were being watched, she blushed as she buried her head into his chest and covered her face using his suit. As Elliot tilted his head down and looked at the girl in his arms, he couldn't help but kiss the crown of her head. Since your father is awake, we could discuss our marriage. There's no rush for that. She blinked her eyes. He leaned in and whispered in her ear. But I can't wait any longer. Upon hearing his affectionate confession, she pursed her lips to hold her laughter. There's nothing you can do even if you're impatient. You're heartless, he sighed, feeling disappointed. All right, we shall discuss it after my dad's condition improves, she giggled. Sure, he nodded. Meanwhile, in a public hospital by the seaside, Wanda, who almost drowned, woke up on the same day. She lay on the bed, still in a state of shock from her near-death experience. Her face was as pale as a sheet. Erica, I won't let you go. I will let Francis know about your true identity, and I look forward to your demise, she grumbled. Madam, we have paid for your medical bills, so you can leave the hospital now, one of the volunteers walked toward her. Thank you. You're all kind-hearted people. After being saved from drowning, Wanda was beyond thankful. Avoid going to the beach next time, as you're more prone to accidents due to your age. I didn't fall into the sea. Someone pushed me down. Wanda was exasperated. Then you should quickly find out who that person is and get them apprehended. A guilty conscience flashed in Wanda's eyes again since she was the one who brought the whole matter upon herself. She got greedy and threatened Erica for a million. Besides, she would be put in a tough position if Erica revealed what she did. However, she was determined to let Frances know about Erica's true identity to strip her of her title as the second daughter of the Tillman family. If she gets punished, I feel so much better. Wait. I remember she has shares under Tillman Constructions. She's not even a Tillman, so she doesn't deserve it, but it's okay because I shall strip her of her fortunes. After she left the hospital, she got on a public bus. While on the way home, she thought that Erica would never have imagined that she was alive, and she didn't plan to make things easy for her. As soon as she got home, 
she took out the yellow pages and purchased a new mobile phone and a SIM card. While she stood at the corner of the shop, she dialed Erica's number. Hi, who is it? Erica sounded impatient as she answered the call. Eris, don't you recognize my voice? Wanda scoffed. R, are you Mrs. Garner? Erica's voice was shaky. Hey, Emph. Erica, your true identity will be revealed very soon. I will let Francis know that you are Naomi's illegitimate daughter and that you're not of the Tillman bloodline, Mrs. Garner, Mrs. Garner. I'm very sorry. I'm begging you. Please don't let them know. I'll pay you a million immediately. Her words were muddled up. I don't want your money anymore. I just want to see your downfall. After Wanda's near-death experience, she was thankful for the volunteers' help and had made up her mind that she would be a good person from there on. Chapter 559 Mrs. Garner, please don't. Mrs. Garner. Without heeding Erica's plea, Wanda hung up the phone. Even though she didn't have Anastasia's phone number, she knew that Anastasia would definitely be at Tillman Constructions, and she could find her there. After Erica received the call from Wanda, her blood ran cold. She was so terrified that her face turned pale as she slumped on the couch, as her biggest fear about Wanda still being alive came true. She couldn't believe that she had survived the fall. What worried her most was the repercussions that would follow. Besides the revelation of her true identity, she might also be charged with attempted murder. Both incidents would be the worst things that could happen to her. No, I'll never let Mrs. Garner meet Anastasia. Her face contorted with rage. As she squinted her eyes, she started scheming to stop Thurm from the meeting. Erica knew Wanda didn't know Anastasia's contact number and house address. She wouldn't know about Pressgrave Hospital either. Thus, the only way for her to meet Anastasia was to go to Tillman Constructions. She was determined to stop both of them from meeting as a murderous intent flashed across her eyes. Since she had attempted to kill Wanda before, she was ready to do it again. While she was scratching her head, trying to think of the perfect candidate to execute the plan, her birth father came to her mind. He'd be willing to do it if he was paid for it because his source of money would be cut off if Erica lost her status as the second daughter of the till. When she left her house, she was hoping that she could meet her birth father as soon as possible. The next moment, he was seen getting down from the public bus at a bus stop not far from her house. It felt like the heavens had answered her prayers. He was rather startled to see her because he was there to ask for more money from her. He was a total failure since he was unemployed and addicted to gambling. The other time when he got money from Erica, he gambled them away, and now that he had no one to turn to, he came joking for his daughter to ask for help. Feeling embarrassed, he walked over and asked, Erica, the thing is, I'm in need of some money. Could you please come in? There is something I need to discuss with you. She invited him into her house. Feeling flattered by her invitation, Het rubbed his hands and asked, Can I really go in? After they were in the main hall, she questioned him curiously. What's your name? My name is Patrick Newman. Hasn't your mother mentioned my name before? After letting out a self-deprecating smile, he continued, I must be so useless that your mother is embarrassed to even bring up my name. As Erica glanced over at Patrick, she had no intention whatsoever of acknowledging him as her father. She then told him about the sticky situation she was in. What? You almost killed your maid? And she's still alive? His eyes widened with bewilderment. Right now, she must be planning to expose my true identity. I'd be done for if she meets Anastasia. I will be kicked out from the Tillman family and won't be able to give you money in the future, Erica exclaimed. Of course, Patrick was reluctant to put his daughter through it. He was actually proud to see that his daughter had the disposition of a young lady from a wealthy family. Erica, how do you want me to help you? He looked at his daughter, wanting to help her out. I need you to make sure that Mrs. Garner is silenced forever. I need you to stop her from meeting Anastasia. She scowled. Then what do you want me to do? Tomorrow, I'll get some men to bring her somewhere, and you will have to kill her for me. He never expected his daughter to be that ruthless. Erica, isn't there another way to solve this issue? 
Are you willing to help me or not? If you don't help me out, I'll be done for, Erica coerced. She didn't feel bad about using him to solve her issues. Upon hearing that, he was flustered and confessed. I, I don't have the guts to, after my mom gave birth to me, you were never here for me. Don't you feel sorry for me? If you want me to acknowledge you as my father, you'll have to do this. If you don't, I won't acknowledge you till the day I die, she threatened him. Chapter 560 As Patrick stood in front of his daughter, he sympathized with her and longed to hear her call him dad. Sure, I'll get rid of her for you, he said through gritted teeth. Seeing how he agreed to do it for her, she smiled as she had finally found a scapegoat and replied, You are the best dad I could ask for. Upon hearing her call him dad, he was elated. Based on the authority that Erica had, she could command the security guards of Tillman Constructions. She immediately made a call to the surveillance room and informed them that if a woman named Wanda Garner asked to see Anastasia, they would have to inform her immediately. Then, she would get them to bring her to a location within the vicinity. The security guard agreed to her request, knowing that she was Frances' second daughter. In order to stop Wanda from meeting Anastasia, Erica immediately drove over to Tillman Constructions to scout for a suitable location to execute her plan. Finally, she found an abandoned warehouse next to the company. Since it was Patrick's first ever up-close encounter with his daughter, he couldn't hide his excitement seeing how capable Erica was and that she would inherit Tillman Constructions. He knew that Frances had two daughters but had no sons, so he was confident that each daughter would inherit half of his inheritance. On the other hand, Wanda planned to look for Anastasia early tomorrow morning after getting some rest. Unknown to her, Erica had set up a trap for her. Meanwhile, in the Pressgrave Hospital, old Madame Pressgrave was happy that Francis had regained consciousness and brought Jared over to visit his grandfather. Seeing that Francis was awake, Jared happily accompanied him and refused to leave his side. However, after Francis got to know that, Anastasia had been separated from Jared all this time while he was in a coma, he felt bad, so he asked her to go home to rest and not worry about him anymore. At 9.00 p.m., Elliot brought Anastasia and Jared back to the mansion. It was almost midnight after they had taken a shower. Jared had sleeping on time, so he had gone to bed at 10.30 p.m., however, both of the adults weren't tired just yet. After her father had regained consciousness, her stress level went down, and she felt more relaxed. When she walked to the main hall, she saw Elliot sitting cross-legged on the couch while looking at the laptop that was placed on his lap. It seemed like he was glowing as the lights were cast on him. She sauntered toward him in her pink pajamas and sat next to him, with her freshly washed hair draping down her shoulder. She propped her chin up and stared at the screen. It was a long email in Chinese with lots of corporate jargon, which made her head spin. Elliot shifted his attention from the screen to her. From his angle, she looked feminine, with glowing skin, and her red lips were playfully pouted. Suddenly, he closed the laptop and set it aside. But you're not done typing. Anastasia blinked her eyes as she thought that she might have interrupted his work. Compared to work, I'm more interested in you, right after, he pulled her into his arms. Her heart fluttered as she leaned in his chest while enjoying it. When my new yacht arrives tomorrow night, I'll bring you and Jared out to sea. He ran his fingers through her long silky hair. Sure, she wanted to go out and get some fresh air too. Let's get engaged after your dad's condition gets better. This matter had been on Elliot's mind. Sure, Anastasia agreed since they were supposed to get engaged earlier on. You smell nice. He picked up a strand of her hair and sniffed lightly, but his eyes were locked on her. The atmosphere instantly became romantic and sensuous. I'm having my period, she said shyly. Upon hearing that, he was speechless since his timing was bad. Do you plan to be mine if you're not having your period? He giggled, trying to get himself out of the awkward situation. I'll eventually be yours, she smirked. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.